Hooray, we finally did it. Now which one of these a million different Grixis decks is this? I think it's this one. Okie dokie here. Let a few people trickle in. I understand everyone's watching Luis, and Luis is going to host Owen for $20 or whatever the Twitter message of the day is from my channel Fireball hooligan friends. But in the meantime, they're all Modern Masters drafting. We got a Grand Prix to win. There ain't no Modern Masters Grand Prix. There's a modern Grand Prix. It's in like two weeks. Can't win if you're not practicing. You can win, it's just harder. Alright, see if we can get this sideboard moved over to like anywhere near a reasonable spot so we can view it simultaneously with the deck. I will resize everything here momentarily also. That way, whomever in the chat wants to get a picture of this, you can get a picture of it and we'll go from there. Maybe this wasn't the build. I thought we had a build where I didn't have E in the main deck, so trying that out this week. Oh, did I not save it? That would suck. Maybe I didn't save it. Well, ooh, maybe it was this. I have a 61 card main deck. That's probably not a good build. And I have a 17 card sideboard. It's probably also not a good build. Probably fix both of these things. Also trying to say I'm trying to put three engineered explosives in my deck. It's not what I'm trying to do, Moto. You're very smart. Not today. No, we don't need this to gate. Alright. Gonna try a little bit of a different build here. Same sort of core and structure. Uh, goal we're looking for is Death Shadows are everywhere. Decks that prey on Death Shadows are everywhere. So there's a bunch of Abzan, a bunch of Jeskai, a bunch of Grixis. Um... Basically, the three th three color control decks are the decks that I've found to be the best against Death Shadow so far. Uh, Abzan being the best one because they get access to both Fatal Push and Path to Exile. And then, I think Grixis is both good against Death Shadows. Not as good as Abzan's, uh, but it's also good against the Abzan deck. So we're going to try to try a leaner, meaner killing machine in terms of decks good against Abzan and also be good against Death Shadow. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I agree, Brian. That's the plan, at least. Alright, so let's go ahead and hop ourselves over here into a modern league. We're going to go bash up some Death Shadows. I've seen a bunch of Affinity of Late, a bunch of Death Shadows. I've been playing a little bit this week. Played a ton this past weekend also. Just trying out a bunch of different decks, seeing like, what angles can we attack from? Is there something different in the format that's like a moving piece that we might be missing? Am I on the wrong account? Oh, I'm in a standard league. No wonder. I remember that league. We didn't win many matches and lost to lots of Lilianas. Silly Andre Gucci having all the Mardu players put Lilianas in his deck. I was not doing a lot of winning as a result. Uh, Mr. Delver, I did at the very beginning. It was the first thing I tried. I tried two in the main deck and they were horrible. Four Fatal Push instead of Bolt. I, Brian, I think that's possible. Um, I think Bolt is probably at the worst I've seen in a long while. Uh, but I think if you're going to run zero Bolt, why aren't you just running, like, Esper or Abzan at that point? I think Sultai is, like, still not very good. I think it's closer. Like, it's sort of in the same boat with me, to me as Fairies, where it's like, the deck's close, but I don't think it's in the right spot. Obviously, right as I start streaming, my phone starts blowing up. Oh, it's Mark Calderano. Gentleman has a plaque for me still. I still have never picked up my second place GP plaque. Brian, it's certainly great for that. Like, I think the majority of the games I win against Death Shadow, I just sit there for a few turns. Like, we both just don't have any resources left. I draw Lightning Bolt, and then I draw Snapcaster Mage, and I'm like, okay, Bolt you, Snapcaster, Bolt you, and then they're dead. Because it's a the thing they need to get themselves low enough, and then there's just incidental damage that comes from 
oh, this creeping tarp had attacked, or I cracked one more fetch lane so I could double spell this one turn, or I have six mana and they have two cards and they fire off a thought seed so they can see if their spell will resolve. So, a uh, slightly different lesson. I pulled up. Oops, that's obviously my Google Chrome. All right, let's go back over here to collection. So we're trying out this right now. You'll see there's no EE in the main deck. Both of them are in the sideboard right now. I, for some reason, have a two counter squalls in the main, one on the side. Well, that wasn't intended. I don't know what I accidentally cut from the deck. It would take me a minute to figure it out, and I'd rather battle. But there's one push main, one push side right now is what we're trying out. Cut the logic knot. Yeah, I should have cut this counter squall from the sideboard. Whatever. Burn so bad against Death Shadows, I think that I doubt we'll see much burn. And watch, I'll say that now, and we'll just run into like three burn players and run. It'll be horrible. All right, this hand is certainly a keep. It's not a great hand, but certainly not one I'm going to mulligan. Um, probably going to lead on Island into Serum Visions. It's going to be a little awkward if I want to top both. Uh, but that will allow us to Fatal Push on 2 and hopefully fix our mana to actually find a Terminate target on 3. And we have all commands up the wazoo. Uh, ooh, my lord. A-A-J... Zungia? I'm sorry for butchering your name, I really am. Have I ever tried running Grixis Delver? I tried it a little bit here and there. It wasn't really my style. Um, I... I played a lot of Delvers when I started out playing Magic. Uh, Delver really started becoming more of a thing right when I was getting into Magic. Uh, it just never worked out for me. Uh, especially in Modern, where everyone just has a bunch of cheap removal, and the really linear decks are just more powerful than what a Delver's doing. And then the big mana decks, they're just like, they don't care about a 3-2 flyer. Like, you just need to have so much disruption to keep up with them. All right, second Salt and Karns, great. Do we want to draw this Tassiger? Uh, we have Double Fetch, Fatal Push. So we could probably turn three if our opponent gives us something to Fatal Push. So I'm going to go ahead and bottom this Tar Pit and top this Tassiger. Looking to fetch Watergrave and Steam Vents. So I'm expecting to be at approximately 14 life here. Hell Stomping Grounds. All right, well, I got exactly what I deserved. So there shouldn't be much burn playing against burn. Our hand's horrible. For some reason our sideboard's wrong. Didn't care to fix it. Oh, lordy. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Lordy, lordy, lordy. And I look like a silly goose because I bought him the silly creeping tar pit. Leading on Eidolon. That's good for me. Alright, so we're going to end up at 13 here, three cards in our graveyard, fetch down to 12, play Tassiger. Hopefully this draws us a land. Spell Snare. Alright, sorry Spell Snare, time has passed for you. I absolutely would like to commit suicide. I would like to kill the Eidolon of the Great Rebel. Alright, go down to 11, go down to 10, get Tassig Life out. Probably still can't win, but, you know, them's the beats. Yeah, taking four damage off your lines against burn. Not an optimal strategy. AJ, awesome. This is random, but are you wearing a blanket over your CFB jersey? Austin, I am. It is it is insanely cold here. Uh, my dad has Epstein-Barr, and revealed a cryptic command. That's horrible for me, so. Uh, and he can't, his hypothalamus can't uh, regulate his temperature, such that he's always hot, so the temperature in the house is therefore always freezing, freezing cold. Uh, as he keeps the thermostat at, like, negative degrees. So, I'm always freezing in the house. My mom and I are frequently, like, cuddled up in blankets. There's, like, three heated blankets that sit down on the sofa downstairs. So, whenever I get home from work or wherever I'm at, uh, I curl up in blankets, as it's approximately 56 degrees in here right now. 
Yeah, Dr. Moy, it's not actually cold, cold. It's just cold in the house. Can I be dead yet? Please? Please, opponent, don't let me, like, draw an island and have a chance to win. I don't deserve it. I made fun of Burn. I didn't even change my deck, fix whatever the issue was. Oh, my lord. I don't even want to crack that. My opponent ha knows I have a cryptic, too. Ugh, and then main phase bolted. Why is this all so bad? Ugh. Balls. I think if my opponent cracks their fetch line, I'm probably going to crack mine. Alright, now my man of my word. I'm just going to hold up the stupid cryptic command the rest of my life. Sounds so bad. I think I'd rather lose. I'd rather lose. Aw, oh, dude, Dokumai, did you set that up? Alright, let's... Hold on. First of all, we'll correct this. I thought I fixed this issue last time. You're always so helpful in Gabby's chat, and you've been nothing but super nice to me. And you're always trying to help out this stream. So, we're going to correct that first issue. What's up, Charles? How goes? Wait, Charles. Awesome, I had no idea you caught the stream, man. What's up? To Iggy, we're against Death Shadow. Yeah. Four to five rounds at a single local game store tournament? That's insane. What is going on over here with this moto keep showing me the... Okay, hopefully that's just like my computer lagging or something silly. All right, I could discard spell my opponent, get back my Tassiger. I don't really want to tap out. Everything about this is horrible. Yeah, flooded Strand's also not great. Eventually my opponent's just going to draw a creature, so we are in a really bad spot here. Problem is, they'll draw a creature, we have to interact with the creature, then they'll just cast a burn spell with it on the stack and we'll just be dead. Like... I guess they've drawn six lands, so somehow this game's still going on, but... The fact that I still don't believe I can win from this position is, like, really horrendous, considering my opponent's draw was really bad, and... I guess that is theoretically a way to win if my opponent keeps drawing lands? Does not seem like a winning strategy, though. Two puts four cards. I'm trying to find a spot where I can actually sequence in a Tassiger by buying it back with Colagon's Command, making them discard, and still hold up Cryptic, because I think it's the only way I can win. But the problem is, obviously, I'm leaving shields down for some amount of time. <laughs> Hopefully it's just a Goblin Guide. I don't think I can beat a Goblin Guide, but... This is embarrassing. Alright, fine. I would rather lose than continue playing this game, as I don't think I can win under the current circumstances. If you have a Boris Charm, you may kill me. If you have a Burn Spell, you should double stone ring me. Okay. I'll be honest, folks. I have no idea this game's still going on, but I'll take it. Okay, thanks, Mr. Delver. Been good, Charles. Thanks, man. It's all delicious waffles. How it goes? Give up on watching the Modern Master streams just in Grix's prep. Awesome. Love to hear that, Gray. Not in a great spot, and I have no idea what's going on in this game. Magic the Gathering card. I think 
think if my opponent manages to play another land, I will probably be fa flashing that in. Whether or not I'll be casting a spell with it, that's another question. Ooh. Okay, so we flush and Snapcaster Mage, and they have any instant speed burn. We survive. If they have two instant speed burn spells, we do not survive. My opponent already showed a propensity to not play creatures. I would expect them to play Eidolons, however, assuming they had a second spell. So the only creatures they can be holding on to are Goblin Guides, Swift Spears, and they do not look like the Nakatl version, as most people that are playing Inspiring Vantage are not also playing Nakatls, and I think Nakatls are very bad right now because of Death Shot. So... I'm going to tap two lands for the Snapcaster Mage. Expect to die, but I expect this gives me the highest win percentage. As our hand cannot beat two instant speed burn spells unless we sit here for days, but we're not going to win that game because our opponent's going to draw more burn spells than we are counter spells. Because in game one, we have a lot of nonsense in our deck. Holy moly, we got to untap. Alright, so you're saying there's a chance. Again, friends, I'm still not optimistic, but... This feels like a Searing Blaze. Lightning Bolt to turn off my two lands. In fact, I have neither of these as a polluted delta is also an issue. This is wonderful. Oy vey. Given that I have to lead on the counter squall and these potentially both have to fetch basics. My opponent knows I have this cryptic. So this might give them a reason to not searing blaze my snapcaster, but we'll see. Okay, so they're going to go for the Searing Blaze. So now I have to decide if I'm just going to let my two lands get stone rained, or if I'm going to go to two, two to fight over this. I think I just have to go to two and fight over this, and just accept that I'm dead to whatever's left over. See, they would have left a little lead on a Swiss Spear. I was dead to two instant speed burn spells two turns ago. So this could be a sorcery speed rift bolt. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Get an island. Get an island. Probably die with this fetch on the stack. Nope. All right, counter target spell and draw a card. Yep. All right, if we live through this turn. I will be optimistic. But I would not expect to live this turn. Alright, there's the Boros Charm. And our stack's frozen. Alright, there we go. There's the Boros Charm. Alright, took long enough and it was an embarrassing game that went on that long. But Alright, so we're going to bring in the extra Fatal Push, bring in the Dispels, bring in this extra Counter Squall. It should be a Negate. I understand. It goes against everything I've said before. I accidentally cut the negate instead of a counter squall because we had a 17 card cyborg and I logged in for some reason. My bad. Uh, and cut all the ancestral visions as they're super slow and we don't need that. We just want to trade cards for cards and then kill our opponent with hopefully a snapcaster major or a tasker or what have you. Alright, let me scroll back up here and catch up. Crack fetch and bolt me. <laughs> Who knows, Doka Boy was silly. What's up, Patriot fans? It's going all right, going all right. I mean, we're playing as burn, so it's not great in terms of magic, but life's good, can't complain, right? Ooh, this hand's really horrendous. Really horrendous. All right, I'm logging that. This hand's great. Yeah, we get to go to, unfortunately, go to 17 to 
uh, put a card in our graveyard, Scalding Tarn, Thought Scour ourselves, which is basically just Dark Ritual in the scenario. It gets us up to four cards, play Sulfur Falls on turn two, and play out a Task Figure. Um, can't imagine any card we would actually put on top here and not crack our Fetch Land, but we'll do it this way. See a land on top, we'll definitely top it in case our opponent Goblin guides us. So we go to 15 and just have a third land in our hand, which is just free equity. Hey, look at that. Speaking of Little Devil. Thank you, Senior Goblin Guide, for helping out the team. We appreciate it very much. Good old actively taking three damage against Burn. Alright, so now if we wanted to, we could fetch a basic island here with a Scalding Tarn and leave up a Spell Snare. probably fine, all honesty. Uh, we go to 14, we're gonna go to 14 at some point anyways. Yeah, I'm into that. It's kind of telegraphed to our opponent what we have, but I don't think that is the biggest of issues in this matchup. I could flip my hand face up on the table and I would lose some amount of equity, but I don't think that not holding up Spell Snare is better than Holding a spell snare. That didn't really sound very correct. So if you're on this for San Antonio, you get a decent number of the team's fetches with your teammates on. If you don't want to share in advance, that's cool. Just curious if you've seen a lot of people going for niche strategies for team performance. Yeah, great. I don't really want to share. Um, it is possible that this exact 75 you're watching right now is not the 75 that I'm playing this weekend. Um, that being said, I believe if I had to play a 75 to win a Magic tournament this weekend, I believe that this is very likely the one I would submit. Alright, so my opponent's representing Lightning Bolt here. And I have a Fatal Push on top of my library. So, let's go ahead and block the Swiss Spear almost assuredly. I'm trying to think if, like, Mutagenic Growth would grow this thing to a 4-5. It's, like, fairly annoying. But I would rather a Goblin Guide be on the battlefield than a Monastery Swiss Spear, given the choice. Um... Get a fatal push on top, and I get to leave up spell snare. I take two damage this way, it leaves me dead to four three damage burn spells. But this also is just four three damage burn spells. Assuming my opponent does in fact have a bolt, wants to bolt the tasker. So yeah, we'll just do this. All right, magic master. I went three out of night. Grixon control at modern Wednesday. I somehow beat. No on blue Tron, then green red Tron, and then white green Tron. Yeah, Fulminator does a lot of beautiful work. Alright, as expected. Senior Tasker down. Rip friend. <laughs> Hoping my opponent just like goes Eidolon. This attack suspect. They make this attack. This is weird. They just gave up like so much equity there. All right, we'll in fact fatal push this. Not nah, just gonna take two damage for no reason. I don't know if I'd make that attack though, unless I have some other incentive to be attacking this turn. So I'm a little surprised by that. Am I getting rest in peace? Core Firewalker. Um. I mean, I guess I'll preserve my life total. I don't really think this card's worth a card, but sure. I'm more over countering a grizzly bear there, unfortunately. Hopefully I get to Snapcaster the Spell Snare or this Fatal Push this turn. Yep, there we go. Thought something was up. Felt a little fishy. Felt a little fishy. Hopefully draw like a Steam Vents or a Water Grave. I mean, I think the best draw is a Creeping Tar Pit for us this turn. It's another Clock plus it. Gives us a fourth line for the Cryptic. Oh, 
It's just not all spells over there. Ooh, basic island. We'll accept. Alright, a little Snapcaster that could. We're gonna need a nickname for Snapcaster. Other than like Snappy Doo that I usually call it. Lava Spike target me. Yeah, no thanks. How about you take two? I take zero, you take two. Ooh, are we gonna play? Oh, I thought they were gonna fetch up a stomping ground and play an idol on. I was gonna get really excited. Lightning Helix targeting me. Alright, well, let's see if we mill ourselves into another spell snare. We don't, no worries. Steam vents, mill over that. Alright, 15 to 9. I've got two cards left and I got a cryptic. I'd say I'm probably a pretty reasonable favorite here. Alright, play this tent. Get a little snappy doo in there. Corey playing this tier 8 deck because of weird team unifies rules. Dude, Backstrove, I'll have you know. I got, I got, uh, what was it? Sam Party and Matt Nass to say that I broke Modern last night. I was very proud. Both of convincing someone else to say that, and that someone else has said that, yes, Grixis is just great. Uh, I don't want to counter draw or counter bats my Snapcaster. I think I just need to keep clocking my opponent. I'm just going to counter draw. I also think it's possible that because my opponent led on their land, their last card's just Searing Blaze. Nope, looks like another Boros charm if they're gonna... Yep, alright, so they're at five. Or we're at five, excuse me. Ooh, Tassigloyf. Ooh, Cryptic Command. That's game. Alright, so I would be completely and utterly shocked if we did not manage to win this game now. Um, but I need a... No, I don't need another Cryptic. Alright, they're at 10. I have no idea what sequence of draws they can even hit. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Goblin Guide. 6. Yeah. Again, like I said, I can't really think of a card they could draw, so I'm just going to counter this. I don't know if a burn spell that does 5 damage they would actually put in their deck. Oh, Colgon's Command. Alright, fair enough. Do, 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 do. I will play win target game and I'll choose this one. You'll notice I un F6 to there because I realized I don't have two black for Colagon's Command and Counter Squall, which, as I cited in my article and many other things I've said before, is a frequent issue that comes up in this matchup and why I don't play three Counter Squalls, and lo and behold, I have three Counter Squalls in my deck because I'm just not very smart and Cut a negate on accident instead of a counter squall when we were building our deck. Whoops, real life misclicks. Alright, that's an odd card to side in this map. Yeah, Dokumoi, it was very baffling to me, but I think that it's just important there to preserve my life total. And I had a Snapcast Remage, so that would give me access to both Fatal Push and a uh, Spell Snare in the yard. I thought it was likely my opponent was trying to get through an idol onto the Great Revel. Unfortunately, nothing to change play draw in the burn matchup. We're just going to click it back and hopefully just dumpster fire our opponent. Lightning Psychopath. <laughs> They're running through Mega Man. Nice. Ugh. Tandas are really high upside. It has many pretty colors and doesn't cost lots of life. It's two good spells. Just so bad against any turn one creature. Alright, this hand's way better. Thought Scour. I don't think I have time to mess around with you on the draw Thought Scour with this hand, unfortunately. You're going to cost me too many points of life, and we don't have a, don't have a Tassiger we're trying to power out, unfortunately. Man, another turn one Goblin guy. Brutal. Brutal. No. I thought we put on a Thought Scour. I didn't put it on the bottom. Alright. Fine, 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 fine. We'll take it. Alright, I play Steam Vents here. We have to go to 16. Because we're just going to be going to 16 anyways from the Goblin Guide. This Pluto Delta is like 100% to get Basic Swamp. Brutal. Alright, yep, we're going to 16. 
Sometimes Sulphur Falls is worth in Spire Bluff Canal. And sometimes you put Spire Bluff Canal in your deck and you draw it on turn 5 and you want to jump off a cliff. Say Livy. Who knows? Swift Spear. Okay. Another Goblin Guide. Okay. I really hope these Goblin Guides reveal... Land into Tassiger? Cryptic Command. And sometimes Cryptic Command's on top of your library. Uh, well, crap. Crap, crap, crap. So if I bolt one of these guides, we've got a 13. They have three cards left. And I think our most likely outcome after that is to lead on thought scouring ourselves. Could thought scour ourselves in our upkeep. I actually don't really want that cryptic. So we'll probably thought scour ourselves in upkeep. And that will help us determine if we want to sulfur falls or delta. Alright, let's go ahead and kill Goblin Guide. And we'll thought scour away this cryptic command we don't really need. Alright, hopefully this draws us into a tasker. Snapcaster, that's good. That is good, but not great. Fortune is good and lead on serum here. Cryptic, and do we want a fourth land right now? So the next turn we're gonna try to Snapcaster, Lightning Bolt, and block. Turn after that, we're gonna try to call against command, discard buyback our Snapcaster and Serum Visions, and then every turn after that, we're just gonna be trying to Grind is a good grind, so I will in fact bottom this and top the island, because we're going to get the island for free off our goblin guide here. This hand won't cost me life to cast my spells, because I have no spells. <laughs> yeah, delicious waffles, I'll pop it up right after this. Alright, helix, so we go to six. Oh god, they're stuck on two lands, that's not good. Not good. Brutal. It hurts. I don't think I'm going to be able to win. Oh boy. Alright, so we can't beat two burn spells anyways. So let's get that out of our head. Can't beat two burn spells. <laughs> what cards can we beat? Can't beat an Eidolon. Can beat more bad creatures, but my opponent has already shown that they haven't played a bad creature. Uh, delicious waffles, I don't. Usually, this is not how you lose. Usually, you don't just get beat down by three haste creatures, um, as their deck really only has eight haste creatures, so it's hard for them to draw three haste creatures. Uh, more often, you're just going to lose because your answers are inefficient to answer their individual threats, and then you're just going to die to two, three burn spells chained together in turns three and four. Alright, yep, I think we're going to pollute a delta for that basic swamp. Had to make sure that wasn't island in our yard and it wasn't crazy. And I'm going to go ahead and main phase Snapcaster Bolt here to make sure we get this Silly Monastery Swiss Spear actually dead. I don't think there's like much value in like running the risk of our opponent going some spell path to exile. Again, like I said, I don't know what two actual spells we could actually beat beat per se, but my hope is many of them are Path to Exiles and or Core Firewalkers, because those are spells we've seen. Yeah, there's a Path to Exile. That is lucky. Oh, GG in the chat. That's that's really nice of you, opponent. Um given that I'm not getting done tap based on my opponent saying GG. Still get an island. Alright, we are dead. We are dead. Silly stream. I turn you on, and everybody shows up with all their unplayable burn decks in the Death Shadow metagame. I'm getting dumpster fired. People are asking me on Facebook if I'm going to San Antonio. Of course I am. Read the read the read the thing, Rob. Come on. Alright, everybody in chat, we're going to get Rab Paisano here in the stream. Not, not unfortunately on Skype and chit-chatting. But we're letting him know 
but we're streaming that we're going to SA. All right, hopefully he'll figure out what that means. Uh, yeah, let's pull up the deck, though. Delicious Waffles, you were kind enough to ask. Um, I believe somebody was trying to get a picture of this to add it to the little deck list tool. I'm not the most tech-savvy. Yeah, Richie, good call. Uh, Apollo, my team is Samuel Black, Justin Cohen, and myself. Also known as, I did a really darn good job to, as soon as they announced this team thing was happening, to pick great teammates. So I picked a guy that lost in the finals of Modern Pro Tour and the guy that's developed a bunch of different decks for teams that have just crushed Modern. Uh, also, two of my absolute best friends that I met through playing Magic, so it helps. Helps that they're great people, good friends of mine, and I mean, even if we, you know, get dumpster fired at the tournament, we just get wrecked every single time, it's going to be great. Uh, Backstrom, I'm trying to do this thing where... I do read the chat, but I also play the games, and it's working out at a point where I really hate it, because then you say messages like that. Or am I reading messages minutes after I send them and it's live for you? So I'll just read the chat as it comes. But no, it's not you, it's me. And no, that wasn't meant to be like a relationship joke, but it's hilarious. Alright, uh, da da da. Yeah, Backstrom, you were correct. Burn in the chat and in the street. First screen a shadow. You think you found a playable modern deck tonight? Backstrom, I'm jealous. Yeah, Monobolts, it's fantastic. I couldn't ask for anything more. Ooh, Grixis dash shadow. So this is the deck that I think might actually be the best deck in modern right now. Uh, basically, I think the existence of this deck just makes me never want to play a combo deck. As it just feels so miserable to get eight discards spelled into four stubborn denials. It's just... The silliest thing in the world. Like, I just don't understand how you're supposed to play decks like Ad Nauseam and Tron and silly things like that when nonsense like this exists. <laughs> Alright, so we've got our Ancestral on Suspend. Game plan here really is just to survive at this point. So we're going to try to trade resources as efficiently as possible. Try to preserve our life total. And answer our cards as they come up really should not be giving away friends' moto names. Um, I'll figure out how to turn that off, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and try and fetch, fetch no more spells here. There's an argument to, like, Thought Scour there and see if you find a Serum Visions, but I just don't think I'd want to take a bunch more damage. I really just want to get a second Water Grave here. Um, getting Inquisition here, I'm just going to let my opponents see my Lightning Bolt and two Thought Scours. I expect them to take Lightning Bolt, but my Thought Scours are actually my better cards in, this hand, in my hand in this matchup. So I'd prefer them to take the lightning bolt. We'll sell the deck, don't worry. So Team Amulet Shadow Grixis. Maybe Mono Bolts. Maybe. Also, spoilers. You can't be giving away all of our secrets, Mono Bolts. Yeah, Richie, I, I love the format. People complain about it all the time, and we're just like, I don't know, man. Have you played this stuff? This is this is a freaking blast. Okay, so I really need to find a Terminator or a push. We've got five outs here. Plus we've got, like, backdoor outs to, like, somehow hitting into two bolts. Um, given that I'm not really at a risk of, like, screwing myself off this folded strand, I'm going to go ahead and thought scare myself first to get information. Okay, so we hit a Snapcaster. Three counters on that visions. <laughs> Could fetch out a blood crypt. I think it's a little I can't fetch a blood crypt, excuse me, can't do that. Cannot do that. Alright, I think I'm just gonna fetch a basic island. So I think I just wanna turn through my library here and see what I can find. Hey, there's a terminate. Perfect. <laughs> Alright, what do I want to draw this turn? Probably another terminate. I'll take Scalding Turn, too. Alright, definitely going to main phase this. Again, big thing here to play around a Stubborn Denial. Um, also, a nice thing is we now have a fourth land here for Snapcaster Terminator on the following turn. If our opponent follows up something like Tassiger or Gurmag Angler or more Death Shadows or things of that nature. Yeah, 
it's a it's a weird balance for me. Just delicious waffles to try. Uh, Z Junior Beast. I've seen various different lists. I think people are still trying to figure out what the heck is the best way to build these decks. Because I'll be completely honest, I do not know the best way to build these things. And obviously, we learned a ton. Like Sam, Jerry, Raptor, Ochoa. Uh, like the four of those guys just kind of pummeled that Grand Prix, right? Where. Like, because Attack Team Probe got banned, people moved away from the combo. And the combo, excuse me, of Team or Battle Rage become immense. And moved into these more, like, mid rangey sort of just, like, overpowered carts with variance reducers, like Straight Wraith and Bobble. Um, this version happens to get blue cards and gives you Serum Missions and Thought Scour. And it's this weird balancing act of, like, well, which 43 spells or whatever do I get to play? Like, if you play Thought Scours, you want to actually play more Shock Lands, because you're more likely to mill over your Shock Lands. Alright, so my opponent's bringing out a giant fatty here. Hopefully it's a... I think I hope it's a Tassiger. Opponent's on six. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, some, some don't play Inquisition, some do... Oh, no, it's a giant fish. Silly fishes. And it's all this balancing game. I think everyone's just trying to figure it out still. Game plan every match. Survive. Yeah, it's, it's a strong game plan. I highly advise. Alright, thankfully this thing only hits for 5 damage. If my opponent does crack their fetch, I'm going to crack mine in response. I'm going to bounce this thing and draw a card. Okay, so they intelligently didn't. I'm going to take 5 here, go to 10, and I'm going to try to counterbalance basically whatever they play this turn. So I've got an Ancestral of Suspend, and I've got them pretty much in burn range. And I want them to fight here on end stop over Stubborn Denial rather than fight over my Ancestral. A Thought Scour, is that something I'm willing to fight over? So the Thought Scour gets them back up to 4 cards, the Fetch Lane gets them to 5, so they could recast the Gurmag Angler by tapping all of their lands. I think I want to get a mountain here because I do want to try to have a potential back up, backdoor burnout plan. Let's see, I think I'm going to fetch a basic mountain here in response. And I'm going to try to counterbalance. Counter target spell. Turn this to your hand. Basically, this is just like playing a tax roll here. I'm trading one for one, and I'm just trying to trade a bunch of tempo. Which, the tempo in this case is getting my opponent to spend this two mana, where I'm spending four, unfortunately. So I'm actually like down overall tempo, but I'm gaining so much in terms of card velocity with Ancestral in the next turn. Yeah, Z, Z, it's really sweet. I really love the deck. There's just so much play going on on both sides, and like this balancing act, trying to figure out what they're doing, what you're doing. All these different things. It's really, really fun. Okay, so we got them at three. So if they have a Tassiger here and hold out the Steam Vents, uh, it's a little more dicey. But it looks like they're just going to tap out for Mr. Fish. Or Mrs. Fish. Just giant fish monster from the sea. But if we draw a Lightning Bolt or Snapcaster, we went on the spot, and that's a Bolt. And this is one of the reasons why I like this matchup from the Grixis side, where all of your top decks are just so absurd. Like, every turn's just so exciting, because the matchups are so much fun to play. But the games are also just, like, super tense, everyone's on edge, you never know what's going to happen, and then... You get to lightning bolt each other. Yeah, Brian, I mean, I, I said we're going to draw a lightning bolt, and then we're just two. I even said we're going to fetch a basic round to make sure we play two. Isn't Scour getting him to six by itself? That should be a seventh. Uh, infective, yes, if we let it resolve, that would have been the case. Uh, the big reason there to counter is the countering of the Thought Scourer would put them to four, because they had three cards in their graveyard. Countering it would put the fourth. And bouncing the fish, they have to crack their fetch land. We just want them to tap out there, because we're getting four new cards in the next turn. Three from the Ancestral, and one from the Draw Step. And getting them to crack the fetch... They can go to 5, but it's a Scalding Tarn. They're unlikely to have a basic island, so it's difficult for them to go to anything but 3, which makes it 1 Lightning Bolt is lethal, so we have 6 outs to just kill them on the spot on 4 cards. 
Uh, plus, we've taxed their entire graveyard. So if they do have to tap out again for the fish, we can very likely just cryptic bounce the fish again, and we've gained so much more time. Bolt, best card in modern. Richie, all right. I'm going to clarify that I wasn't scrolling in between games because I was salty. I was doing it because I didn't want to bring a surgical extract, but I can't really do it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I, mean, I don't know. Oh, you're talking to Russell. Okay, I was going to say. We can we can break in search of Colts Gun Fur if everyone wants to see everyone's deck loss. It's amusing to me. Alright, um biggest thing in these matchups is not to have too many reactive cards. The spell snares are okay because they do play Snapcaster Mages. Um, I haven't played enough with Grixis against this version of Death Shadow to know if spell snares are like a card I actively want. Um I'm guessing that counter squalls are bad and damnation and push are great. Oops, Surgical, stay out for a second. We've got to figure out if we want you. Ancestrals are great as it's just a card advantage. Like, we're heaving piles of cards at one another in the early part of the game. Um, they are holding up counter spells, but they're much more mana efficient than we are, so I don't think we want to bring in Full Miner Mage. Uh, the Cryptics are very dicey, and I can certainly see shaving on some of them, but we need to find better cards. Could bring in EE, but really only answers Death Shadow, and unlike the green versions, they're not going to be recurring it as often. I think we can bring in one. Let's try this. I'm not certain if this is correct. I definitely don't want the Fulminator Mages. I think that would be a mistake, just a fundamental mistake of not understanding how, like, mana velocity works. I don't know if mana velocity is really a term or if I'm just making up words, but basically the ability to use your mana, like, yes, they're going to hold up four counter spells and their counter spells are going to be, like, Stubborn Denial or Dispel, but it's not like we're going to be fighting battles over negate effects and logic knots and things of that nature. Brian, I did consider Dispel, but I think it gets really dead against the discard spells. Um, I forget the player's name in chat that suggested they may not play Inquisitions. If we find out during this game we see more of their deck and they don't have Inquisitions, then I think Dispel is more reasonable. Alright, we're definitely keeping this hand. This hand's great. We don't have a creature, unfortunately, so it's not, like, fantastic, but definitely not well getting. Um, and it's very easy to, like, play in a, play in a way to get me to tap mana and then... Play Water Grave, shock myself, play no spells, go. Fair. I can respect. Hmm. Now we've got a fun little decision. Do we want to shock ourselves? Not. We shock ourselves, we draw a terminate, we could terminate. We don't really need to terminate, so. Yeah, I'll just play Basic Island. Probably Blood Crypt tap next turn into Watery Grave. Seems like my opponent's got like a really slow developing draw. I'm trying to figure out like what cards in their hands like. Holgon's Command. Holgon's Command, Delve Spell, some other nonsense that I can't figure out. Ooh, that was a good draw. There were good draws and there were great draws, and that was a great draw. If I could choose among like cards to stack on my library, Thought Scout was pretty high on my list. <laughs> yeah, Z, that's a good reason. Maybe I should have played my Blood Crypt on tap there to play around Lily a little bit, so I could bolt her and then K command her on the next turn. It's possible. Lily on a last hope. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Not too afraid of that. See, I love stuff like this. Like, look at this. It's just this grind fest, and my opponent boards into a planeswalker, and they have like 11 creatures or something that tries to bring back creatures and play a silly card advantage game. Like, could you have imagined six months ago people putting Liliana the last hope in their deck? Just no one did it. No one did it. Even Abzan didn't do it yet. They were playing Gideon, but they weren't playing Liliana. This is great. Modern, Modern's just a freaking blast. Whoever doesn't like this format is just wrong. I'm pretty sure you can have opinions that are wrong. That's an opinion that's just wrong. Modern's great. Uh, current plan here is to shock, discard the Liliana, and then bolt. Um, I'm doing this and being susceptible to getting, say, Starboard Denial or things of that nature. Is, uh, if my opponent wants to start fighting over Colgon's commands on shock your Liliana for two damage and make you discard a card, when I think that also might just be helping them as they can just rebuy those things. I'm perfectly fine as I have three cards on layaway. I just kind of want to start fights. <laughs> Sh 
Shock myself go. Shock myself go. It's great. Two Inquisition, two Stubborn? Okay, thanks, Azorius. I've seen various different things. Like, I've seen four Stubborn Vanals before. I would love to redirect that damage. And they discarded a Death Shadow. Interesting. Ooh, piece of candy. All right, let's go ahead and Serum Visions here. Try to find ourselves a land drop. Found a Snapcaster Mage, two Thought Scourers. Hmm. Interesting. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bottom both these Thought Scourers. I really just want lands. I've got that Ancestral coming off next turn, and I'm actually going to lead on the Bolts here. Uh, reason for leading on the bolt before suspending the second ancestral visions is this plays around a stubborn, a single stubborn denial. Um, and now I can suspend this ancestral, so I'm back down to four cards. That allowed me to go up to eight on my next draw step, and if they can't command me back, I'm just going to discard my Sully Spell Snare. I guess I might discard my Cryptic. Alright, so they return their Death Shadow and they're making me discard. I guess if they're stuck on three, their Snapcaster's not going to be super effective. Yeah, draw draw more cards. <laughs> Zach, you're never too late, dude. What's up, man? W-E are the card advantage deck. Only room for one in this... Oh, we are the card advantage deck. Reading comprehension. It's a big skill. <laughs> Alright, more Liliana's. Oh no. Okay, good. Phew. I got worried for a second. Thought we weren't going to find a land. I got so sad. Alright, so now we could like Snapcaster Bolt. But then it's going to die to Lily. Probably just do that on an end step. Force them to use a removal spell or maybe a counter spell on the Snapcaster Mage. Have another. Have another K command. So yeah, let's play as Delta. Ship it back. I'm to pull up the Exile Pile again. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm getting really bad at that. I was so good about it before. Thought Scour, target yourself. Gosh, I almost want a cryptic command this. So my base baseline thinking from wanting to cryptic command this is that it's unlikely, not super unlikely, but unlikely they have a land in their hand. Thought Scour is very likely a spell they could have had over the course of the last two turns if they had three mana and they spent three mana, then three mana, then three mana. Uh, the Thought Scour could put stuff like uh, Snapcaster Mage, Tassiger, Gurmag Angler, uh, Street Wraith all in their yard, and all cards that they actively want to turn on right now. So the Thought Scour is sort of like drawing access to two cards immediately. Uh... Yeah, I think I'm going to counter this. This might look really silly, but I'm going to fight over this. Uh, and the motives we're going to be doing here are counterbalance. So counter target spell, bounce your Liliana. As I then want to try to counter this Liliana on the way back down the second time. As again, we're so far ahead on card advantage at this point, we just want time. If we're given enough time here, I think it's really difficult for us to lose this game. Alright, so my opponent's tapping out for a Tassiger. Oop, nope, you only have four cards there, friend. You have a Gurman Gangler. Oh, darn it, another Thought Scar. Rip. And they did mill over a Snappy Doo. So when they exile six here, they get to leave Snappy Doo. Ooh, no. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. They exiled the Snapcaster. So they have another Snapcaster in their hand based on the two spells they left there. See, funny minute games like this come up trying to identify people's hands. So here we're going to terminate this Tassiger, and then we're going to uh, hold up Snapcaster Bolt. So we will shock ourselves. We will terminate the Tassigoyf. Expect my opponent to just jam Liliana here and minus it anyways. Oh no, they drew an island. Not fantastic. Not fantastic. Alright, that can resolve. And then let's see what they do here. Okay, 
up. So they're just straight up plus one. So I would expect the Snapcaster Mage to not do what I want it to do. Lightning Bolt. Bolt you. Alright, maybe it's going to work. I didn't expect it to work. Another land here would not be bad. Another Snapcaster, you know, above average. Kill off Lily. And again, we're pretty certain our opponent has a Snapcaster Mage in their hand based on the spells that they left in their graveyard from Delve on Tassiger. Uh, they left a Kulligan's Command and a Terminate, which are among the best Snapcaster spells you can have in the matchup. So the spell snare that's in our graveyard here we expect to be very important. All right, so our opponent's Death Shadow that we know about is turned back on because they fetched out there. All right, so they have Death Shadow and then this Tassiger and then one unknown. So we're getting more cards against next turn, and I think their last card's a Snapcaster Mage. So I think my plan here is to let this resolve, and I'm going to try to Snapcaster Terminate this. And then if they play the Death Shadow, we'll alter our plan into uh, Kulagon's Command, Shock V, Death Shadow, make you discard, untap, draw four cards, Snapcaster Terminate. It's kind of weird to leave this Cryptic Command somewhat dangling like this in our hand, but I think it's fine. And yes, I am aware that this can get Stubborn Denialed. But again, if they Stubborn Denial it, we're really happy. As that means their last card's not a, a Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> Alright. Come on, little Snappy-Doo. Snappy-Dappy-Doo. Wait, come back. Yeah. I won't say I feel bad for the Death Shadow opponent. But god, it feels great being on this side of the matchup. So yeah, if you're, if you're running into a lot of Death Shadows, you should play some Grixis. It's a delight. Oh yeah, Richie, you didn't even get to live the dream. It's unfortunate, I'm sorry. But our opponent didn't want to see the second Snapcaster load on the third. CW... Oh, goodness gracious. I've got to get better at pronunciations. I want to say it's Comlod, but it's all spelled weird. CWA. You're, you're welcome. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're having a blast. Hopefully you're having fun. Yeah, Richie, it's a complicated game from both sides. A lot of that was just like us guessing their hand, them guessing ours. Opponents, opponents being super friendly. Give them the have funs and good lucks. All right, I'm gonna keep this hand. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fetch down to 17, get a steam vents, and serum visions it up. Try to find ourselves a second land. Hopefully, during that time, we managed to also find a Tassiger. Cryptics are a little bit of danglers in this hand, but hand should develop nicely. It's got a fair amount of filtering, a fair amount of card advantage, and this is one of the reasons to play 22 lands. Is sometimes you I have one land, you have these two blue spells, and they can help you filter around, too. Extra lands or extra spells, depending on the course of the game you're in. Uh, yeah, our opponent did have pretty pretty terminates. I, I thought about sending my terminates back to CFB after I purchased them, and be like, yo, let me get the new arts. Alright, there's a Thought Scour. Don't know if we want this Lightning Bolt. We certainly want this Flooded Strand. Hopefully our opponent's not on a burn. I probably should have topped that second... Lightning bolt behind. Eh, maybe that was dumb. Who knows? I'd have to think about it more. I think given I have a Colgon's command, I'd rather bottom it. Holy moly. Our hand is not good against both Relic and Tron. Blech. Alright, our life total doesn't matter here. Also, Relic usually insinuates they are not Eldrazi Tron, as Eldrazi Tron is still actively running around with Chalice of the Void. Mill ourselves here with Thought Scour, see if we hit a Tasker. If we hit a Tasker, we want to go off immediately. Alright, we don't, so we'll stop here. If our opponent wants to crack the Relic on their turn, we will let them. 
are my thoughts between running Fatal Push and Terminate? Um, so, Gajamaru. Um, the Terminates are really important for fighting stuff like Eldrazi. Oh, my opponent just has Natural Tron. This is silly. That's not cool. This is stupid. Alright, I think my opponent has Natural Tron. So, thoughts count myself right now. Don't really want to. Sure, they're gone. They're dead. Uh, the Terminates are really important for answering the larger creatures, Delve creatures, Eldrazi monsters. Um, ooh, they didn't have it. Hallelujah. There's some justice in the world. And the Fatal Pushes are really good against like the smaller Aggro decks, plus like Death Shadow. Don't. F yeah, I'm much more likely to want to fire off two bolts here to fill my graveyard than I am to need black mana for something. Um, so I think it's still really important to have a full set of... of Terminates at your disposal, where I, I call a full set 3 in this case. But I think you do need some access to Fatal Pushes right now, just because so many people are just going so low to the ground. I'm trying to figure out I'm supposed to bolt my opponent once here. Kind of just running away in my hand. I think I'm going to bolt them once. I'm not sure about the second one. I think I'm supposed to hold on to the second one. Watch, it'll probably come bite me in the ass later and I'll feel really silly. Hopefully I'll land though. Land. No, I should have been more specific. specific. Crap. Rah. Dang it. <laughs> Alright, we screwed up. <laughs> Didn't ask nicely for an island. <laughs> just said land. You're the only other land in the deck that doesn't produce blue mana. <laughs> uh, lordy. Alright. Uh, but I, I think both are fairly important right now, to answer your question in sort of a quick terms there. Mario. Yeah, Richie, these are these hands are much more of a sweat. Okay, our opponent has access to Tron next turn. Thankfully, they won't have access to 10 mana, but let's just say it wouldn't be optimistic. Alright, um, I think we're gonna snap Caster Thought Scour here. I think that's better than putting my opponent to 9 for whatever reason. <laughs> like, you can snap Caster Bolt here and then bolt them, and that puts him to 11, and then attacking them puts him to 9, because my snap Caster's clearly getting through. But I think it's just so important to hit a blue source here for Cryptic. Because <laughs> my plan is to try to, like, grind them out here with the snap Caster Mage. Just kind of poking away. Unfortunately, we've milled over an island, and is this a scalding turn? And I think there was an island in this batch, right? And that was uh, the two fetches. Okay. Another bolt. Sorry. Right. Well, can't take them with you. Upstairs. Sulfur Falls. Dang it. All right, we'll take it. We will take it. Because we have to. Not because we want to, but because we have to. Um, let's see here. We're probably going to fire off this Call of Guns command. I guess I should probably, in theory, attack first. I just kind of wanted F6. It's not like my opponent has anything. Very clear based on the previous turn, they can't have anything. I think it's very unlikely I need two, three more bolts. So, we're going to tap like this. I'm trying to think of what permanent I even want my opponent to have. World Breaker, I guess. No, can't beat that either. I don't know. I can't really beat any of the giant spaghetti monsters from another dimension. Can't really beat a No Stone. It's unfortunate, too, because my opponent's hand's clogged full of these giant threats. I guess Karn's the one I'm most likely to beat. Hopefully, I just have a Karn. Yeah, it could probably be Karn. Given that the most popular aggro deck has multiple planeswalkers, do you think there's any merit to playing Dreadbore? Uh, Dokumo, I think the sorcery speed is just so, 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 so bad on the card, unfortunately. I really gotta stop jinxing myself like that.
getting the Lomogs. They have another Tron piece in their hand. Alright. Well, let's make your discard and shock you. So we draw a Terminate. We attack and put them to four. Little Mog's very likely to eat our blue source and a creature. So we're going to end up a point short. Con dealer. Not good enough. <laughs> uh, well, crap. Alright, see if we can like backdoor steal this somehow. Attack with both. Puts my opponent to eight. Could like kill the world breaker. Opponent unfortunately has a Tron land though, based on how they searched an Ulamog. Man, breaking that blue source that turn was so rough. Would have been able to float a mana instead of flying our Tassiger. Counter the World Breaker, bounce a Tron piece. Next turn, Cryptic Counter, bounce a Tron piece. Alright, well we can't do anything about what happened two turns ago, so what can we do now? We can certainly attack. Hopefully our opponent makes a mistake for some reason to block Snapcast from Rage playing around the Bolt, but I can't imagine that happening. <laughs> okay, now is there any world? Any world where opponent does not have an additional piece of Tron. Because if that world exists, we should kill this world breaker. I think there are some worlds in which my opponent has made a serious blunder. I don't believe this world is that world, and I believe my opponent is competent. So I don't believe that's going to happen, but there's a dream. But yeah, as I was saying, I think the Dread Boar being Sorcery is just way too bad. I think you could possibly put it in your sideboard, but this deck just doesn't really have answers answering Planeswalkers. Uh, specifically the Lilianas, which tick up so slowly. Um, now, dealing with Gideons and Chandras, however, those ones are really rough to deal with. Um, that I could see, like, wanting Dread Boar for, but thankfully the two, like the Chandra and Gideon that you care about, both cost four mana. So you can try to maneuver scenarios. If your opponent's casting four mana sorceries, you can, like, in theory, do something. Alright, well, our opponent was both competent and lived in reality. So they trumped us. Unfortunate, because they didn't really do anything until turn five, so it's like, hopefully a game we could have won, but we didn't, so there's that. Alright, uh, bring in all the disruptive elements, cut all the nonsense. Nonsense, especially now, fatal push is the worst. Bolts are bad. Terminate suck. Oh god, are we at the point where we only have to leave in one bolt? That's great. Alright, we did it. Easiest sideboarding ever. Uh, spell snares, even though they don't have many two mana targets. Some have Warping Whale, some have Spell Skite. But most importantly is hitting Sylvan Scrying. Uh, surgical main package here. Fulminate their land, surgical it. Uh, negate effects. Super sweet at stopping Ancient Starring, stopping Ugin, stopping Oblivion Stone, stopping Karn. Uh, their actual best card in the matchup still is uh, World Breaker. And my plan to beat World Breaker is to never let it hit the stack. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> hmm... Hoist, I'm trying to think for you. Well, it's a good deck that's both cheap on Moto and good. Well, this hand's horrendous. This hand's also not good, but I'm going to keep it. Ooh, my opponent went to six. That's good. You might see something enter. Oh, my opponent's on four cards? Three cards? My hand could legitimately lose to a three card hand. So, uh, buckle up. Okay. Well, that was stupid. Alright, that was lame. It happens. I actually played some Tron this weekend, and that happened to me in one of my games where I went to four in game one, and then I went to four in game three, and I was just like, hey, this is just retarded. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? I think I cast 
three spells in the games I lost. Um, yeah, we were trying to test out like what should our third deck be. Putting together their different decks and I was trying out. I Tron deck and goodness gracious, you could not pay me enough money to play Tron. Cheap decks. I don't know what the price of Affinity is. I assume it's not very cheap. Ugh. I have like four dead cards in this hand. I think his hand's too bad. Hey, Citrus. I'm doing well. Agonizing decisions. Wanting to play Magic, my opponent's mulliganing to five, and I actually feel bad for them because this was happening to me all weekend. I had like a 10% win rate over the last weekend. I just could not win with anything in anything, any format. All right, I do not want another fetch land. Thank you kindly, Moto. You can have your fetch lands back. Expedition map. Okay, I thought Scour's nice. Interesting to note, both the steam vents are in her hand, so these are just going to be fetching water graves. Ooh, they're going to have turn 3 Tron, even though they went to 5 cards. Not great for me. Not great. Hopefully this mills us into a counter squall, and they just slam dunk a card on their 5 card hand, and then we counter it, and then we draw a Fulminator Mage, and we just win on the spot. That'd be the dream. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's happening, so... Well, there's the full later. All right, all right. Bottom both these silly islands. Hopefully this Karn thing doesn't happen. Hopefully I didn't jinx this again. If I did, I'm sorry, stream. I didn't mean to. It was never intended. Scred is... Yeah, Hoist, that's not a bad one. I certainly think Scred's a playable deck. Like, I lost through the finals for Grand Prix. I don't know what else determines playability. Um... I think you could certainly play Scrub Red. I think it's not as good now because of Death Shadows. Because the highly disruptive draws are tough for you to beat. But, I mean, yeah, if you turn two Blood Moon them, you turn two Blood Moon them. But I assume that Blood Moons and Simeon Spirit guys are really expensive, so maybe it's not a great one. I unfortunately did play some Tron. I tried out a bunch of different decks this weekend to try to figure out what our last deck should be uh, for the Grand Prix. And, dear lord... I learned some things about why people don't like modern, and it's just because so many of the decks that people play are just not very good. You learn some things that... When you play decks that are just fundamentally flawed, you're not going to like the format. Yeah, you're playing the cards you love, but you need to do different things with those cards. Um, I played a bunch of different decks and didn't like many of them. Okay, so we're certainly playing Full Minor Mage here, so trying to figure out which land we're blowing up. Our opponent searched up a power plant. Certainly that gives us some amount of information, but it doesn't give us the whole story. The turn after that, we want to go suspend our Ancestral Visions and Kologon's Command. Uh, likely shock this Oblivion Stone and buy back the Full Minor Mage. Um, we're actually in the marketplace to draw more lands here, so we want a fifth land for our Snapcaster Mage to start flashing back to Command, so... I'm going to shock myself with the Steam Vents... I don't know why I do this. I always click on the mana before I actually try to cast the full and rage. I think we're just going to blow up the power planks. That's what my opponent searched for, but... There's an argument in blowing up towers and my opponent having extra towers is like an issue. Float to mana. Okay, we'll attempt to leave the phase. Okay. <laughs> my opponent's just trying to get me there or something, I guess. I don't really know what it was. Um... Yeah, I think we'll the power plant. My opponents were, like, super cunning and did that. More props to them. Um, but yeah, just can't, cannot afford to let them cast Dugan. And it's clear they don't have a 7 mana spell here, so. They're just looking for a one-turn reprieve where they both cannot get an extra land and achieve Tron. Burn's a decent Anderson, and I think Burn's a good deck. I think right now it's not as good because Death Shadow, but if you come prepared with a good strategy for Death Shadow, I think Burn could still be pretty good. Um, okay, so let's probably make any discard still. 
Yeah, shock ourselves. Spun this. I'd rather have red sources blown up than blue sources, or black sources, excuse me. I'm trying to figure out how much I care about this O stone when I have just, you know, oodles and oodles of color guns commands right now. I know oodles is not a technical term, but it's a term I'm using. Alright, these ghost quarters are a little silly. They have three cards left. Three cards left. Alright, I'm just going to start making a ghost card. I hope the little follow things are appearing on the screen for you guys, because they're not appearing for me. Unless I look over really quickly and I'm really bad at it still. Dokumoi, it was horrendous. I was complaining very, very loudly to Justin and Sam that I couldn't win with anything, and it came to a point where I almost asked them to find a new teammate, because I just I couldn't win. It didn't matter what I did, I just lost with everything. And I felt really bad, because it's like, these are my teammates that are all like, you know, trusting me to help them, you know, get all this stuff together for this tournament. At the end of the day, I just I couldn't win with anything, and it's like, holy crap. Like, I, I was playing Grixis and I was losing. I went 03 on stream, and then I went 03 again in another league after that, and I just felt horrible. Um, Alright, upkeep. We're going to blow up this tower. Tower of power? Yeah, blow up the tower of power. Again, don't want my opponent to achieve Tron. Um, there's an argument to do it on my own turn, because they can now, like, tap it for mana, and ghost quarter themselves, and go get a basic forest. <laughs> And then we'll start running our snappy dappy do distractions. Stony Silence, Blood Moon, and Crumble to Dust on the same game as GP Vancouver. He's no longer on Tron. Citrus. I wish a lot of bad things on Tron players. Just because it's such a frustrating experience playing against it sometimes. But I don't know if I wish that much bad on them. Like, I wish them to get Fulminator Mage and Surgical. And then if they win with a Thrag Tusk later, like, yeah, I'm rooting for them at that point. Like, alright. You've gone through misery. Can you fight through it? Like, that's when I start rooting for the Tron player. It's like, okay, the opponent did their thing. If you can now still win, props to you. It's hard. It is really hard to fight through as a combo deck when someone's done, you know, their awful, hideous sideboard plan to you. But when you can fight through it, mad props to those people that persevere. Like, I love those stories. I love watching those games. I love being a part of those games. Um... But yeah, when you just roll out turn 3 Tron and then crack your stupid star, draw your card, and then play a World Breaker? No, no, screw you. <laughs> that, that's when you're the devil. Um, I don't have any more shock lines to search up. That's silly. I don't really have a reason to draw step this, because they have a Ugin and they can just discard. <laughs> just gonna flash this back and unstep, hide as much information. Hey, Admiral Chop, I'm here. Finally. For some reason I stayed away as long as I could. I don't have any I don't have any justification, good reasons, or bad reasons. I I was just mostly lazy, doing other things. But no, I'm I'm glad to be back and hopefully you're having fun watching. So I definitely miss hanging out with you guys. Everyone in the chat is always super nice, super friendly, super helpful. Like I certainly if I don't have the best chat, I mean Gabby probably has the best chat from the magic streams I hang out in. Um, I certainly have among the best, so I'm very happy that I'm back and, you know, people still want to come back and watch me kick it with chat, goof off, have fun talks about random silly things that no one cares about, and play some Grixis. Uh, Zach, our opponent Mulligan did, like, negative five, and then conceded. Like, I think they went to three cards and then conceded. Uh, Johnny, I think that Jace the Mind Sculptor would be heinously busted. Like, I believe it would be the best card in the format. It would take some time for the format to properly adjust and people to figure out the best decks. That always happens. I wouldn't expect it to be an overnight thing. But the card's raw power level is so insanely high, I'd be shocked if it were not a part of the best deck. Um, I've been watching some of the little versus here of things, like Majors, Tom Ross... Uh, some of that gang over at uh, the SCG squad do. Uh, playing with the Jace decks. Like, they had a Miracles deck. They had a Death Shadow deck. I think there were a couple others. I don't remember them. But, um, yeah, I mean, the decks that they were playing, like, 
Jace was a fixture of those decks, and I don't think you need to make it like that much around Jace. I just think you kind of need Jace with fetch lands and then value. Uh, no reason to fire up my Fulminator Mage there, as my opponent's not close to playing this Ugin in their hand, which is the last spell. But I am at a spot where I have to deal with this Ostone here pretty soon. Um, but that is going to give me a nice spot where if I find another Snapcaster Mage right on the time, uh, we can, like, Colagon's Command, try to buy back a Snapcaster, try to blow up the Ostone. And, of course, we found a Surgical Extraction in the game. will probably end immediately. Um, let's see. We do not have any of our friends in there. We have seven mana right now. So we can Thought Scour ourselves, Snapcaster, K Command, and Tassiger. So let's Thought Scour. Again, I'm not afraid of this Ugin in their hand, so I don't need to discard it. And if I mill over a... Uh, pardon me. A Snapcaster Mage or another Fulminator Mage, I'd prefer to buy that back with the Snapcaster Mage. I'm going to fire off here. Um, and I do want this Tassiger down... Uh, on this turn. That's interesting. Could just wait now. I do not like not dealing damage, but... I have so many Snapcaster Mages and Cryptics. None of their spells matter. Okay. Um, so yeah, blue, black... Play Snappy Doo. <laughs> Target K Command. Let that resolve. Gonna go ahead and pop one of their. Probably one of their groves, actually. They're just ne they're never obtaining Tron this game. <sighs> Alright, they'll put let that happen. Let's go ahead and return target creature, get back Fulminator, blow up the South Stone. Red, red, black, play Tassiger, win target game, choose this one. Oh, they didn't want to blow up the world? Okay. My opponent's probably just kind of off it. They're pretty frustrated at this point. I can, I can definitely feel for him. Like like I said, I played six or nine matches or something with Tron. I went 0-6 or 0-9. or However many games I played was how many games I did not win. There was not a lot of winning being done. Uh, and it's not like my opponent played badly, like, they just mulligan to three, mulligan to five, and just didn't do anything. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's a huge mistake. I, I, I'm fearful. Like, the safety of the format, and, like, there's a lot of money that has to get invested in Jace's, and if you're wrong, it's a card you're wrong on for many, many thousands of dollars, and many, many years of people's faith. Like, Dredge was okay to miss on because Golgari Grave Troll was both not an expensive card, it was going to be an archetype that people did not actively want to play. So it wasn't like Golgari Grave Troll was going to jump to $100 overnight and then spawn you spending $1,000 on a deck. Unbanning Jace the Mind Sculptor, right now I believe he's $60. So it's $240 to buy yourself a playset of Jace's. If you unban it, overnight I would guess the card goes to $100, possibly more. So it's $400 to buy a playset of Jace's. After that, to buy blue fetches, Scalding Tarns are 50, Polluted Deltas are 30, and Flooded Strands, I believe, are also 30. Um, I don't know which set you need, but I'm, I'd be very shocked if you did not want Polluted Deltas. Um, like, building a blue control deck in Modern is easily $1,000, depending on which combination of rare answers you play. And if you're building some sort of, like, Terminus style deck, you're going to have a bunch of Planeswalkers, cards, permanents playing to the battlefield. Um, many of those are Planeswalkers that have rotated out, you can't acquire anymore, those aren't cheap. Like, yes, the the money aspect of it is silly that like we're arguing over. Part of the reason why you can't unban it is its price tag ra rather than like its play pattern, which also is an issue that we can bring up and discuss. Or its raw power level is maybe too high. It's... If you are wrong and then have to ban Jace and then ban all these different other blue control decks that you've propped up from tier 2, tier 2.5, tier 1.5, whatever their silly number is, and you've propped them up to potential tier 1 decks, and then you have to ban it for power level reasons, you lose the faith of every one of those persons that invested because they're like, I want to play with Jace. Jace the Mind Sculptor was the face of the Magic brand for years. 
if you're wrong on that and then have to ban the face of brand, like, think how bad it was for them when they had to ban Emrakul. Like, she's the most badass villain. I mean, it was probably a really sad day for the brand team when it's like, yes, the face of Eldritch Moon, the face of the story going all the way back from Battle for Zendikar had to get nixed out of standard. And mostly because of just raw power concerns. I think if you do that and then have to ban Jace the Mind Sculptor again in Modern, Modern could die. People are going to lose too much faith. It, it sounds, you know, really depressing and really scary. It is. I mean, it is really scary. These decisions aren't easy. Like, I feel for their R&D team. Like, I have to deal with this a little bit in terms of, you know, being a game designer. These things are hard. You don't have all the information. You don't get to grind a million games like the general public does. You don't have a, you know, a 12 million person team or however many people play Magic from kitchen tables to, you know, the finals of the Pro Tour. You have maybe a 20 person team. And if you get a decision like that wrong, it's catastrophic for millions and millions of dollars and people who invest money and invest their time. Um, I assume my opponent's on Scape Shift. I'm just going to fetch her water grave here. We'll get away from the depressing crap. I'm sorry. Uh, Admiral Shot. Let's see. I have a Esper Dash Shadow. Ooh, you think Esper Dash Shadow is the best? I have not played against one of those yet, but I was talking to Sam and Justin about it, and I said, hey, I want to build this. I think this deck's really good. Um, some of the Esper Transcendent guys talk to me occasionally on Facebook, and they've got a bunch of sweet ideas. Speaking of which, I need to get added back to their forum group. I don't know what happened. I think I got accidentally removed from it, or I removed myself. I'm silly, whatever. Sakura Tribe Builder, you're gonna kill me. Um, no real reason to kill that thing. If they want to attack me with that thing like six times, I'm fine with that. Uh, plan here is my opponent doesn't fire off any spell that I can counter with counter spell in the next turn. I'm going to Snapcaster bolt them. That's why I'm bolting their face there. End up drawing a Colgon's command, so I don't have to worry about too much. I've been having your deck for a while. I've had to shave a bolt and a snare to play an extra turn and a fail to push to deal with the Shadow Menace. Uh, Admiral, I don't know if this current list is going to interest you at all. I'm playing one push, four bolt, three terminate. I think that the bolts, you actually want to aim more at their face than at their creatures. I think there are spots where you can actually kill off some of their creatures with bolts, but I think bolts are actually meant to play more like Lava Spikes in that matchup. And if you saw the game that we played a couple a couple matches ago, uh, occasionally you fire them off at their face and then redirect to Planeswalkers. Ben, I don't know. You could just ask Rob Paisano. I've been talking to him about it a lot. He's been asking me a fair amount about different modern decks and different combinations also. Do you feel Lantern should exist in modern? Uh, mono bolts, there's... Short answer, no. Long answer, maybe? It depends on what you want the format to be. I think they've reached the point in the format where they just kind of want to let people play whatever it is their toy is, whatever it is their favorite thing is. And if your favorite thing is, you know, locking opponents out of the game and milling them, then I think right now they're going to sort of allow that. I don't think that that's going to go any go away, you know, right here, right now. Um, but do I believe that should exist sort of in the abstract? Not really. I think the way that it kills you is just too silly that I have to sit there for another 10 minutes. That was a good draw. Uh, I'm going to fetch main phase here. The reason for fetching main phase is you can get yourself caught if I wanted to then fetch on end step. I would not be able to fetch on end step and play around it through the breach. <laughs> but we're going to gain information here on whether or not our opponent has through the breach based on how they play this turn. <sighs> Eldrazi charm. That's a freaking sweet card. hope they make Eldrazi charm. Of course, Hoist. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Facebook if you need any help in terms of choosing decks. I'm always down to help. The Eldrazi and Shadow Menace is becoming too mush. I apparently did not really scroll down well at all. I didn't realize it wasn't scrolling down. So yeah, Ben, I just saw your message about I'm really behind on chat or there's a lot of lag in your video. So there's not a lot of lag, there's just a lot of me failing at chat. Uh, Mayo Yo, May Zero Y Zero. I'm calling you Mayo Yo. Uh, Mayo Yo, it is 
Um, da -da 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 -da. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. Man, opponent suspends a search for tomorrow. Come on, opponent. Now I have to make a decision. I don't want to be the dummy. Okay, so... Here's a spot where I think we're supposed to call a Gons commander opponent, shock them, and discard. And the reason for that is if they sneak in a... Or if they threw the breach in a... Snapcat... Or not a Snapcaster, a Primeval Titan. Uh, we... I think don't have to worry about it attacking. Let's see. I think MTGO bot works. Uh, through the breach. All right, you may put a creature that gains haste, sacrifice the beginning of the beginning of the next sense. Perfect. All right, we learned how to read magic cards. So if we do this, they can't actually attack with a. They'll get two lands, but then they have no hand, which is exactly where we want them. And we have two counter spells for a search for tomorrow. Now they unfortunately don't anger the gods. That's not a Magic the Gathering card. Uh, unfortunately, don't have a land to play as Tassigur just yet, so we're going to hold off for at least a turn. <laughs> Again, just looking to trade this Cryptic Command for basically any card in the stack. Why are we not using Rob Alexander Fetches and Shocklands? Here's this because I'm a man of no class. I'm assuming is the reason. Oh boy, you're going to make me look. Uh, Vincent Price... Philip, oh. Alright, are you going to tell me that there are ones that I should own that I don't own because I'm too silly? Alright, if I Snapcaster Bolt them, they go to 8. They sneak in a Titan. They get a Valakut and a land. No, I think this is fine. Ballsy, but fine is where I'm putting this one. Yeah, I'm going to Snapcaster Bolt them here. I think I just need to get my opponent dead. I think sitting around here with my two counter spells, while all nice and dandy, I don't think is going to close the door at the rate at which I need to close the door. All right, perfect. I do have enough here, so we should attack first, and then exile our whole graveyard. And let's put our opponent on a one-turn clock. If they have Bolt, I'm going to feel a little sad. Won't lie. Uh, ACC, my biggest takeaway is I'm very bad at just picking up a deck and just knowing how it functions. Um, I really need to take the time to actually stare at a deck list and try to fundamentally talk myself through what is this deck trying to do. Um, and really think about what are the sort of things that that deck is trying to do in the metagame different than other decks. Uh, go to 15 here. Tassiger, exile the graveyard. And... Hope my opponent doesn't have land and two scape shifts. They do. Say love you. He was fine, beautiful, like Grixis. Yeah. Other than that, ACC, I think a bunch of people just play like fundamentally flawed. Oh crap, I screwed up. Oh, that was bad. I should have countered that and bounced a land. That was bad. Dear God, I hope I don't lose. Please don't kill me. I'm so bad. Summoner's Pact. Summoner's Pact, I'll let Resolve. My opponent could get a Sakura Tribelder here, but I don't think that's their plan. That was really bad. Yes, yeah, there's this. I finally started having to shave every morning. Um, I shave on the way to work because I'm really, really lazy and don't like to, like, I wake up in the morning and I try to do, like, push-ups and sit-ups and, oh, they did get a Sir Kara Tribe Elder. Okay, I'll let that resolve. Is this the scape shift? Oh, they were just, okay, they were just trying to bait me. That's fine. Uh, counter target spell, tap all creatures my opponent controls. Counter target spell. I should bounce their thing in case I have a valid cut somehow. Counter target spell. Bounce your Sakura Tribe Alder. And this plays around the wings, so I can just terminate. Okay. Uh, yeah, but even then, I don't think I'd ever be able to grow a real beard, so to speak. 
Yeah, dig a sack. I think that's what he was getting at. I don't know. To be fair, the groove basics were donated from uh, a buddy of mine, Rudy Bresca. Rudy Bresca, all around great people. If you ever have a chance to meet that guy, uh, he's been nothing but super nice to me the six years at this point I've known him. I met him at the very first Star City event I played at. And just always been a super chill dude. Shout out to Rudy Bresca. Alright, I don't like creature removal in this matchup. My opponent has. Silly cards like Corsair, that's fine. Let me try to catch up on chat. Let's do that first. Uh, what do I think of Grixis Shadow? Jin, I think it might be the best deck. It is certainly the deck that impressed me the most playing a ton of matches this weekend when I was preparing for the event. I tested out a bunch of different decks trying to figure out the best decks for our team to play. And it certainly was the deck that just rawly impressed me the most in terms of how it played. Yeah, Timmy, I really should improve on not throwing away games. <laughs> Uh, Sears' props to you. I just can't deal with it. I really can't. Uh, Mono Bolts. Theoretically, I'm a pro player. Like, I am sponsored by ChannelFireball.com. Hence, sweet jerseys. I get to test with a bunch of really awesome people. You know, a bunch of great friends now that I've met through playing Magic. Um, our team is Matthew Nass, Pat Cox, Joshua Layton, Paul Chion, uh, myself, and Martin Yuza. Martin Yuzum also teaming with uh, him and Shuhei Nakamura for GP Mexico City. So, shout-outs to those two guys. Um, and, I mean, yeah, they, they pay us. We don't get, you know, cards or what have you. But, yeah, I mean, we get a deal from them from wearing their gear. Um, we sh show up to tournaments. We're going to do promos. Like, I'm doing Mexico City, um, and I'm doing the promos on Friday. I'm going to be hanging out doing the uh, gunslinging event at 5 p.m., and I'm going to be doing, you know, the VIP meet and greet. And, like, it's more a matter of... Sort of being there also for the community. I need to cut a card. I guess we'll cut out a spell. Yeah, whatever. Um, so, in theory, I'm a professional magic player, but I wouldn't consider myself personally a professional magic player until I was platinum. I guess if I made streaming, like, my permanent day job instead of game design, then I would consider myself a professional magic player as I'd be making a living from playing magic. Um, but no, I... I it's close, I guess I technically am, but I don't really know. Do you think building around one deck for the team event is good? Apollo, based on the amount that we've struggled, because obviously I'm talented at playing Grixis, and I struggle at playing other things, it's difficult. Um, there's a ton of decks out there in Modern, which is nice, but they all have these weird weaknesses, and a lot of these cards overlap. Um, ooh, Admiral Shaw, thank you. I have... Obviously not done my research. And it leads to weird and interesting spots. I'm certainly keeping this hand basically off the base, uh, the back of Spell Snare plus Fulminator Mage. I think it would be a huge mistake to mulligan Sand. Um, so, yes, I think you can build around one deck. Like, in our case, we're building around Grixis. What are the best decks we can get after Grixis? Um... Now, I think for every team, that is not going to be the correct decision. Um, I think there are some teams where I don't know what the best three-deck combination is. If I knew what the best three-deck combination is, like, maybe it is Abzan, Grixis, Affinity. If that is the best three possible decks you can put on the table, then I would just say that you're supposed to play those three decks. From a raw, like, this is how you win the most matches of Magic. Um, but I think that... There are definitely things of familiarity in the modern format, and I value it personally very highly. Um, that I think, like, making me play something that I'm not going to have any clue what the hell I'm doing, I think it's just very silly. Like, I think if you're going to make me, make me play a deck in modern, it better be a deck I've played before. Like, I've played Absent, I've played Jund, I've played Grixis. Give me one of those three decks I can probably play competently. But if you give me Grixis, I can probably say I'm the best Grixis player in the world. And putting me on Grixis, that's probably a safe place for us to be in this tournament. So, to answer your question, do I think it's silly or bad? No. Do we think you can do it? Of course. I think I want to keep this fetch length. It's an extra card for this Tassiger. It's very likely to make that Tassiger cost two mana. This hand kind of wants to fifth land. And I want to leave the spell in the graveyard for Snapcaster. Oh no, I just have six for my turn! Oh my god, damn it. <laughs> 
All right, well, yeah, whatever. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. Life in a jug, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, let me look at this deck list here in a second. Oh, uh, lordy. Yeah, seriously, like, I've had only a few interactions with Shuei, but he's been nothing but super nice to me. What am I a sellout to? CFB being awesome? Shout out to Andrew Brown, guy works in Magic R&D, left us in the pro playing community of top eighting two pro tours in a season to hang out and make Magic what it is for us. Alright, well, our opponent didn't play a two mana ramp spell, so I'm gonna crack this fetch land that I now discarded this land to hand size so that I could cast my Tassiger on this turn. Or something. Yeah. Play as I say, not as I do. Please. Please don't play as I do on stream. It's really bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was really great. Yeah, li life in a jug, that should be added to our little quotes list. Quote, I'm the best Grixis player in the world. F6 is through my turn. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that was amusing. Alright, Tassigur does beat up that Chandra pretty reasonably. 14. Alright, alright. Whatever. I ain't afraid of no ghost. I'm terrified. My opponent's probably just going to play a Primal Titan next turn. I'm going to die, but whatever. Oh, boy. Well, that sucked. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Yeah, we have a Cryptic Command open now. Everything would be great. Everything would just be peachy. Oh, this is funny. Funny, funny, funny. Alright, uh, let's see. Blowing up the stomping ground. Yeah, whatever. Oh boy, I'm very silly. Very, very silly. That was so bad. <laughs> ben, why would you not shout out to Andrew Brown? Andrew Brown has done God's work for us. I mean, sucks for you. He was... Probably the best deck builder in your team behind you, right? May have been the best technical player, I don't know. But, I don't know. All around Andrew's, you know, fantastico. So. Yes, shout outs to Andrew Brown. Yeah, strategic discard or something. Yeah, R Russell Wilson, I, I think... If you've ever seen any of those silly graphs where people are like, yeah, if you play PPTQs, like, you just run into a bunch of people that complain and, and also their stuff. And I was certainly one of those people. Like, I was definitely miserable to bring around when I was in college. I was just a horrible human being. Not saying I've improved that much, but, um, yeah, I definitely complained and bashed other people at times, and it was bad. Um, you can make an argument here to, like, cryptic bounce their Chandra or anything. It's just so, super silly and you're getting yourself in a bad spot. Um, but yeah, a bunch of people that I've met at like the Pro Tour level, Grand Prix level of Magic have just been nothing but just great human beings. Yeah, Ben, it's... That's why Thought Scour is Dark Ritual. Wait, seriously, so you mean for San Antonio, right? You sold every Moto deck, but Mardu and Cheerios? You could have chosen any decks, and you chose Mardu and Cheerios. You're such a goofball, man. You're great. I think my opponent was going to, like, cast Anger of the Gods there or something. And then I think they realized that they need three loyalty on their Chandra. I don't really understand what just happened, but... My opponent floated red, red, green. Yeah, great happens to all of us. Sometimes we don't play great. What in God's name is this magic card? Oh, never mind. I've played this at a Grand Prix before. Okay. Whenever it's dealt damage, you get that many 1-1 one -one death touchers. Dear God, if we reach the world, I'm going to cryptic counter draw this. This, is, this cannot be real. This has got to be a different timeline. Okay. Yep. All right.
Yep, we, re we reached that point in the stream where I discard instead of playing my lands, and I counter Hornet's Nests. Richie, I'm not hating on Mardu. I'm just trying to understand why Sirius has sold all of his decks, and then of all decks, saved Mardu and Cheerios. But they're just two totally distinct decks. Mardu kills all your creatures, and Cheerios just is like, I got all these equipment, uh, are you dead? It does not have legs, it has circles. Uh, yeah, Citrus, if you get to know Andrew at all, or even meet him for 5-10 seconds, he's super laid back, super chill, everything, life's great for him. I think we're in this world. Yeah, it's an interesting world. The man loves Gideon and a quarter shields. <laughs> this is the darkest timeline. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that was a good draw. That was a good draw. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and thought scare ourselves and try to find a land drop here. Hey, land drop. See, if I didn't discard all those lands to hand size, I wouldn't be in this predicament of wondering how I'm going to get six lands on the battlefield for this silly snapcast room H. Oh, goodness gracious. What is this? What is going on? Is this Beast Within? Okay, I don't know what's going on anymore. I think my opponent's trolling me, but I don't know. I just don't even know anymore. Uh, sure, suspend this, play this tap, because I can't imagine needing that mana. But I can't imagine this game going on for another half an hour, because... <laughs> it's been a dumpster farm. I've held a volume into five, I discarded hand size instead of playing land. Blocks Goyf, Citrus, it always blocks Goyf. It does do that. That's a lot of valid cuts on the battlefield. I've done a really bad job of Fulminator Surgical in those. I should try harder. I would draw an Island. Or Snapcaster Mage. It's a beautiful card. Uh, just realized I'm just gonna die to a dad. Uh, crap. Okay. I just realized that I'm just gonna die to a Primeval Titan. <laughs> Uh, bum ba da bum bum ba da bum bum How do we beat Primeval Titan with our crappy hand? I can't think of one, so we're gonna die and it's gonna suck. I got a new strategy. Hope my opponent doesn't go for it. They've got one card in their hand. Not an actively good strategy. I accidentally clicked through countering that too. Jesus Christ, I am not on the ball today. Alright, that was bad. There were many bad things done in this game, and I'm glad we're going to lose. <laughs> but that was one of them also. <laughs> sure, that happens because I'm a dummy. <laughs> Alright, no more hand being on the F6 and F2 key. It's just been dangerous the entire night. I hope someone in the chat's just bashing me. I'm too afraid to look. Too afraid to look. I thought about putting Grave Titan on my board. No, it honestly has never crossed my mind, actually. <laughs> it has crossed my mind to try to not be very silly. Like, you know, I put these cards in my deck, I should cast them. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm gonna look. It's gonna be bad. Oh, come on! Can someone get the punk count up to like six? It's been a horrible game. It's just been horrible. Wee! Yeah. 
You know, you put these counter target non creature spells in your deck because they're pretty, not because they do things. Alright, plan here is my opponent's gonna have to pay upkeep on their summoner's pact. I'm gonna blow up whatever their other Cinder Glade is that's up. I'm gonna go for a double block on the Primeval Titan. Uh, obviously, if they have another land, I'm just going to be dead, but whatever. I, I'll, I, will, I will counter it this time. I won't screw up. My hand's off the stupid F2 key. I hope my opponents in the chat are just like losing their mind making fun of me. Alright, am I dead now? I didn't do the math. They're going to remember to get a stomping ground? That'll kill me. Alright. So you can play a game badly and then horrendously and then make zero correct plays. I believe I reached the maid. No, I didn't make zero correct plays. I, I played horrendously. Alright. Let's let's fix that. That was bad. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> I have no words. No words to explain what just happened. You've been dead to your opponent not having a brain aneurysm for most of the turns of this game, to be fair. They mulligan to five. Most of that's on me. <laughs> ben, but like one of the first things you're taught in magic is to look at your hand and ask yourself, do I have a land? And the first thing you should do is deploy your land. Like, that's what you're taught at level, like, zero. Like, I'm literally learning what magic cards do. I look at the pretty pictures. I might read one of the pretty cards and go, that's a lot of words. I have no idea what that thing just said to me. Uh, Rage Phoenix, I think so. I just don't think that, like, if they resolve a primeval plan, you're more likely to lose than anything. I think it's just much more common that you're just going to beat them by basically mana screwing them. Um, like in theory, based off what I've seen, I could cut this to spell for a terminate, but I don't even want to terminate an obstinate bail off. That card's just not a card against me. Um, I'd like to terminate a Corsair of Crufex. So here, if we want to do this, we could do this. Fine doing this. My opponent might have a Corsair of Crufex. I don't know if I got an in in time. So my deck submission thing is frozen right now at 138. I guess we didn't get it in, but I don't know. Would you keep three thought scarers and social visions cryptic command? Yeah, probably would. Best Grixis player. Yeah. Oh god, we should do Twitch plays Grixis. That was basically you guys definitely would have done way better than me in that last game, I guarantee that. Alright, I saw it. Velix, thanks for following, man. Welcome. Hopefully you're, hopefully you're having a blast at my expense. <laughs> and hopefully you're learning exactly what not to do. You know, maybe play your lands, maybe counter your opponent's spells when they're dead on the board. You know, the usual things you do when you play Magic. Terminates for Hornet's Nest. I didn't consider it, but I guess that's a thing. Alright, Slot Scar ourselves. Um, all right, no reason to play the Water Grave. We didn't draw anything that would change it. <laughs> Maybe I'll get really lucky, and my opponent won't have a Mana Rat spell again. Rats. All right, really need a threat this turn. Mm, that doesn't really qualify. That doesn't really either. Tesker. Counter Squall, you're a little late to the party front. There. Right. Let's go and get another Ancestor out there. If my opponent Chandra is, it's going to be a little dicey, but we do have a lot of sweet creatures in our graveyard. Look at all those pretty cards. Two Surgicals, a Tasker. <laughs> Punch should probably get forced here. Alright, so they probably have Glade in their hand then. As far as we can tell, Summoner's Pact is counterable. I don't think it's counterable. 
It can't be countered. Like, I just didn't counter it last game, because how could you counter it? <laughs> Alright, there's Chandra. Okay, plan to deal with Chandra is to counter whatever spell they cast next turn and bounce her. Ooh, now I'm getting text messages from people that I hope are also making fun of me. They're just like, dude, I just watched you make this turn, and you just didn't counter your opponent's spell and just lost the game because of it. Why'd you do that? It's like, oh, because I didn't want to win. I wasn't trying to win. What's our side? Oh, that's, oh, that's smart, Admiral. I didn't think about that. Nope. Uh, we have zero dispels and we have one terminate. Because we got two terminates over here. That was really smart. Good call. Forgot about that button. Yeah, Richie. It was really bad. Uh... <laughs> Your opponent keeps destroying them. Yeah, Homestruck. Sometimes, sometimes people are just the devil. They just won't let you... We'll let you have your fun. Alright, add red red to the pool. Hornet's nest, you got it, man. You can have that one. Free of charge. Free of charge. You wanna play a ramp spell though? That that'll cost you. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna drop to eight cards here. I'm not gonna fire off the cryptic because now I'll just fire it off their next spell, because I just don't consider the Hornet's Nest a spell. Okay, the Tassiger does help. So now we have an incentive to start making moves. <sighs> the question is, is our first move going to be to Spell Snare and Cryptic, or is our first move going to be Tassiger and Cryptic? I think I'm going to go for the Snare and Cryptic line into the Fulminator Tassiger Counter Squall, so let's do that. Yeah, because I really don't want them to get another land here, because they're at five right now. They get up to six off of a ramp spell. It puts me in a dicey position where I could still just lose to um, Prime Time, and it's much more likely that if they don't have a land and I counter two ramp spells, then I don't have to leave up Snapcaster plus Cryptic on the turn after, and I can't just fall it away a land. So let's shock ourselves down to 13. Ship turn back. We do have to deal with the Chandra this turn because otherwise it goes ultimate the turn after. It's not just F6 because we've already made that mistake once or seven times tonight. Can this deck beat pawns on a consistent basis? Yeah, Russell, I think the matchup's favorable. The first couple times I lost it because I just had no idea what the heck was happening. My opponents just beat the crap out of me. Um, but I learned the way to the matchup is... Uh, playing a bunch of your fetch lands and just never using them. Basically, it's like having a bunch of counter spells in play and you have a bunch of counter spells in your hand. Apollo, I wish I could blame it on that, but that's not the issue. The issue is this thing. It's just not on. Obstinate Bailoff. Alright, well, I said I would counter and bounce pretty much anything. I just don't care about this card, though, do I? Not particularly. I just don't... Do they play land at this turn? I don't think they did, because I think that fifth land is there from the fetch based off of what we just determined. <laughs> nope. Okay, so this thing can resolve. But I do have to... do have to do some shenaniganry here in a moment. What I'm playing around there is my opponent playing a fourth land, sorry, excuse me, a sixth land, fourth untapped, and then recasting the Chandra. So I just can't actually defeat the Chandra with what's going on right now. Um, and the main plan here is just mana dialing my opponent. And me going to nine or five or one or whatever isn't very relevant until my opponent actually gets a, a combo sort of going. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Turn target permanent, draw a card. <laughs> of note, we still have two surgicals in here, so if we ever do get a spot where our opponent plays out a Valico, we can just try to blow them out. They didn't play land, which is a little unfortunate for us. So we're kind of in a spot where we want to hold up Snapcaster Cryptic. 
probably am going to do that this turn. Unfortunately, I don't have any instant speed cards I can just fire off, so... The other issue is just firing off two full air mages is not very effective, as I just get put to seven from the Chandra. Hmm. <laughs> you get a, card, a bunch of cards the next turn off Ancestral. Yeah, I'm just going to... We got enough cards that I just don't need. That I can afford to discard to hand size some number of times if I have to. Just more concerned with losing the game on the spot. <laughs> Alchemy, I agree. Don't worry, I've been uh, chatting with production trying to make that more of a thing. Um, so hopefully. Hopefully you'll be seeing that more in the future. Do I have another Snapcatcher in my yard? Man, how do I not have a Snapcatcher? This is silly. <laughs> if my opponent just passes here, I'm going to call on Guns Command, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna snap past for a cold guns command, excuse me. I guess we could snap cast or a surgical to gain information, but seems kind of skeptical. Chandra. So I kinda wanna use the most expensive counter spell as I'm getting to see four more cards on the next turn. Potentially more with the Serum Visions to try to find another Cryptic. My opponent's already played a land. And I do kind of want the Counter Squalls to team up with the cheaper spells. Oh, I think I'm still going to Counter Squall this, though. This might be wrong. This I'm less confident about. This this certainly could be incorrect. So now the question is, given that, am I supposed to snap cast your mage? Surgical this to gain information. I just don't know what the information is going to do for me, really. So, nope. As I said before, going to five or one is... Five is probably okay. Going to one is probably an issue. Okay, infinite snapcasters. Okay. So now, given that, I can fetch a basic island going to eight and get out this Tassiger. And I can discard the Serum Visions to hand size. Or maybe this Fell Snare. Figure that out in a second. Get an island, Tassiger. So visions, visions, visions. We're never activating this task, right? So. I guess there's a chance in an alternate reality where I'll activate it, but. Counterbalance the Snapcast Major. The problem is, I just want the, the uh, Cryptic Command in my graveyard. Um, I guess I can discard a Full Minor Mage. Yeah, Fallen Rage is probably past his prime. Cracking the fetch on the unstub. Okay, that's weird to me. I don't know why you would do that. I feel like you just want that on the battlefield in case you drew a Velikut. So we're getting a fourth green, so we're going to try to double scape shift me. Alright, get out of here, Fulminator. So I'm expecting what I have to do this turn is Snapcaster, Counter Squall, and then Counter Squall here. Move my hand away from F2. Yeah, Emerald, I thought that at first also. I think the reason I swung back to not wanting the Fulminator Mage is I already have one and I'm never going to need two from this spot because eventually I'm just going to hit their Valakuts and win the game on the spot. Another Chandra. So what spells can I actually cast that harass me here if I Snapcaster those? They could go Land, Scape Shift, and then I just have another Counter Squall, so... This I want to Snapcaster get it on the battlefield. Yeah. So 
We'll Snapcaster counter squall this. Okay. And I don't think it's possible, like, the Serum Visions plays better if I draw extra lands, as it just buys me into more Crypto Commands, which are basically just play this card win the games at this point. Okay, opponent didn't find an attack there, makes sense. Another Serum. Alright, let's go ahead and Serum Visions. Try to find lands and Cryptics. Hey, lands and Cryptics. Alright, uh, we do not need the Scalding Tarn, we will absolutely take this Cryptic. Now do we want to draw into that cryptic immediately? I don't think I need to, so I will not, because I don't want to take the damage going to six. Six is different than seven, just as five was different than four previously. All right, let's get that down tapped. Of note, we are in a weird spot where if our opponent ever like bolts their own hornet's nest, we have to start doing things. Okay, so do we think our opponent is through the breach? Chandra's, Obstinate Baloths, Sir Tribalders, Far Seeks, Explorers. Two, four, eight, twelve, fourteen, eighteen. Primal Titans, twenty two. Search for Nows is twenty six. Scape Shifts is thirty. They have two of the summoner's packs. What I'm really counting is, like, can they actually have a Through the Breach in their 75? Or in their 60 that they've presented based on the cards I've seen? Um, because I kind of want to Snapcaster Mage, Cryptic Tap, their team draw card. Uh, attack for eight. And then try to untap and kill them in the next turn. The other thing I'm considering here is maybe I want to Snapcaster Mage Surgical and gain the information now. I think that's the line I'm going to go with, because I'm going to have access to a Cryptic and a Counter Squall. So let's do that, we'll get all the information, and then we'll try to kill our opponent over two turns here with enough creatures. Playing this super, super safely, and you don't need to do this, but... Um, what do I want to kill? I want to kill Sakura Tribalder? No, because I have a spell smear. I want to kill Chandra Sh Torture Defiance. No, I don't even really want to kill that. Whatever, I'll still target Chandra. They escape shift Valakut Wooded Foothills. Okay, so they are starting to... Okay, so do they have any nonsense? They have two Hornet's Nests, three Obstinate Veils total. Okay, so their list was basically exactly what I thought it was, except for they have three Hornet's Nests instead of two. Okay, so I'm going to leave that Chandra in there. Exile these two. So now the question is, do I want to Snapcaster right now to get that Wooded Foothills out of their hand? Which I think I probably should have done earlier anyways. I think the answer is yes. Surgical. Surgical, your wooded foothills. I want to leave this one in the deck, right? Yes. And I want to leave this one in the yard so I can surgical that one if I need to. Okay. Untap. Have access to all the mana I want. Ship the turn back. My opponent plays Valakut. Blows up a Snapcaster Mage when I go to attackers. So my line is going to be tap your team, bounce one of your lands, force you to do it right then. So I can actually Serum Visions this turn. Sorry, I'm like ignoring the chat right now, but I'm just trying to like do this and not time out and be silly. All right, terminate. Uh, I guess that does it too. We don't need either of these cards. All right, we no longer really need to tap their team anymore, but we can if we want to. 
If you thought scare them, you can potentially just win. Yeah, you could. Yes, Zach, I did mean to leave it in there, because I think it's a bad draw for them. It's a card I'd prefer them to have in their hand than in their library. Yeah, I can hit their Valakut now. <laughs> Shift. So if I counter this, counter this, I don't want to bounce the hornet's nest because then I can just shoot it. Alright, we'll just counter draw this, it's fine. Counter draw, that is fine. <laughs> oh, that was stupid. I should have counter scrolled that. I'm really dumb. Good god. That was really stupid. Just like accidentally gave myself a chance to lose. That was really, 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 really dumb. You are really, 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 really dumb. You should pay attention. I'm so dumb. The number of mistakes made in this match was, like, infinite. Like, actual infinite. My opponent just does a Pyramidal Titan who lose. Yes! Justice! Thank you! Alright. Thank you, I got freaking punished. I got exactly what I deserve for being so bad and just not thinking. Oh, come on. Ice Condom Nolzan, we need like six punts for that. Every turn in this game has just been horrendous. I'm so stupid. <laughs> This is my favorite League of Legends champ is why it's Garen. It's not Garen, it is uh, Nami. Nami is by far my favorite. Not even reason to task her. God, I'm so dumb. But that was beautiful. Everything was played so well until I decided to do s two stupid things in a row that turn. First one was Crypticking, not Counterscrolling. And the second one was firing off the Terminus, or the Terminate on instep. Instead of going, play Fulminator Mage, then blow up your land, then terminate your Hornet's Nest in response to your Valakut trigger targeting it, leaving up four mana for the Cryptic on the next turn, attacking for just the four, and then countering whatever they play, because they would have gone from 16 to 14 off the Counter Squall, and then tapping their team and countering their spell and winning the game. Instead, I did every possible thing that I could to allow my opponent to win, and allowed them to win. Sorry, everybody. I haven't played well. It's been bad. Whoops. <sighs> Whoopsie daisy. Uh, Russell, we made a lot of errors. And by we, I mean everyone sitting in this chair playing this computer game. And the chat probably tried to play correctly. But thankfully, I'm going to make up for it, and we'll open some treasure chests after we win this match. What was the match we lost? Other than the one... Oh, burn. I don't think we could have won the burn match. Certainly should be 3-1. Should. 
Should probably be playing for a 4 1, but. See Daisy. Panda, this hand's great. Why would you not want to keep this hand? You have two bolts, two lands, a serum visions. Just try to smooth the hand out and a snapcaster mage with a cryptic. This hand does everything you want it to. Alright. Spell smear. Rats. Alright. Suspend this visions and play this fetch and not crack it. So we bought him two uh, expensive spells and we prefer to draw a land. Yeah, Admiral. If you guys should play the gates for me, I'd screw up less. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, let's see. Fire off a bolt into Reman. Sounds kind of bad for me. I don't have any spell I want to resolve, so. Nope. Don't let them cash in the Remand. Well, that was at least a reasonable draw if I wasn't going to draw a land. So that's decent. I'm shocking myself. Nope, okay. Alright, friend, well, this turn you're getting a bolt to the face because I'm not discarding next turn. And obviously, I prefer you to remand the cellular lightning bolt for no reason. <laughs> so I've got ancestral in two turns. Okie dokie. This game's not going well. Uh, Blood Artist, I am not going to be disclosing that on the stream, unfortunately. And to be completely honest, we haven't even chosen all three of our decks. But you're probably watching one of them. <laughs> Seer Sist. Oh, God. Matt, well, they would have had to have played better than me that game. That game was something else. Of note, when my opponent fights over my Ancestral here, I'm probably losing the fight on purpose. So I think it is very likely they have green source in a prime time. Remand. That is fine. Guess what? I've got Ancestral Visions. It's your turn. Five color. They're five color Valka? Aren't they just four? They usually splash black. Yep. I don't know about it. Yeah, it is bring the light scape shift. Yeah, kind of. Maybe. They could always miss a land drop, but it's true. It's harder to miss a land drop when the creature they just cast makes a land, but. That is one of the decks we are considering, Blood Artist. I think Burns. Not great against Death Shadow, but is actually otherwise pretty great. Hey, there's the black splash. Nice. Got another lightning bolt. Could just bolt them to death. You never know. Probably dead this turn. I'd be surprised if I lifted this turn. Peer through depths. Not a particularly promising sign, but can't really fight over that. <sighs> Puts Reman in their hand. That was not the card I wanted to see. I would have accepted Farseek. Farseek is a card I could potentially beat. Uh, I would accept Peer Third Ups. That's a card I could potentially beat. Intercessing Burn is very good against Shadow. Interesting. That is interesting to me. We have found the exact opposite, actually, Blood Artist. We found it to be very, very tough for the burn player to win. Okay. I am dead. 
I don't need to see all your nonsense. I've played this game before. Get our spells in. Get them surgicals. Get the counter squall. Get the foamies. Get the removal spells out of our deck. And what's the last card I want to cut? Maybe an Ancestral. <laughs> Seems wrong to me, though. Yeah, I can't be right. Cannot be right. Man, why is our deck so good? We're just, like, pre board for all these matchups, and then I just try to throw them all away. So Dokomoi, I think in base theory that what you're saying makes sense, but it's actually correct for the Death Shadow player to not really deal damage to themselves. Uh, you want to fetch your basics in that matchup. Play your hand disruption spells, taking the instant speed burn spells, the cheap burn spells that the, the burn player can deploy quickly over the course of like land count 2 slash 3 slash 3 slash 4, depending on the point in the game. Um, where basically they can try to burn you out from 10 or 12 on an end step. Like, 4 to you, 3 to you, untap, spike you, spike you. Um, those are the hands that are good against burn. Ugh. Hmm. Sure, I'll keep. Sounds bad. Mostly keeping off the power level of spell snare in this hand. I'm basically trusting that my spell snare is going to trade for multiple cards. And I'm playing my fetch lane here as I want to fetch and thin my deck. That was nice. Well, I total somewhat relevant in this matchup, but not enough that I'm not gonna like try to cast my spells. So hopefully my opponent goes for a ramp spell here. I get to counter Thought Scour, but if they don't and they just have remand, then I'll fight over their silly remand and resolve my Tassiger and try to win with that. This puts me to four cards. Yeah, it's possible, Richie. I just never want to board out that card ever. I don't think I've actually ever boarded one of those out. Basically in any matchup. Alright, get the swamp down. Get out of here, cards. I'd like to counter your remand. Get countered. No, oh, they didn't have a remand. I'm so confused. Alright, I'll counter your peer through depths. Maybe. Oh, they just didn't have anything? That's weird. Alright, I think my opponent may have kept an even more sketchy hand than mine, then. Shocking myself to hold up Cryptic and Snare, Snap, Snare. Not that I'm likely to Snare, Snap, Snare based on what's occurred this game, but... Almost no reason to not have Cryptic available. Yield filter land. <laughs> Interesting. So filter land makes me less incentivized to mill myself with Tassiger, as I can just get Cryptic bounced on my Tassiger. <sighs> and it's very plausible I can't even recast it. Yeah, and I'd kind of rather cryptic counter my opponent's spell and bounce their land. Alright, just want to activate Tasker then. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually think Deflecting Palm is a good card to bring in, from my experience. 
Liliana of the Veil, Inquisition of Kozilek, like Collector Brutality, and Thoughtseize just don't really make Deflecting Palm a card. I think you're better off just, like, literally putting Shardfell in your sideboard. All right, I'm going to counter this and bounce. Probably their Steam Vents, I think. Counter target spell, bounce your Steam Vents. Sounds plausible to me. Just want to kind of set them back lands here. <laughs> I guess I would love to draw another land for Snapcaster plus Cryptic. But I think it's more important to just keep my opponent off balance here. And if my opponent has to shock themselves, the two points of damage is relevant for this Call of God's Command in my hand. It also turns on racing, possibly with my creepy tar pit. That's a good draw. Uh, we are at the point of the game where I'll start just flashing in naked snapcasters here. Um, I haven't ever played with MJ. Uh, I haven't actually played in a few weeks, almost a month I think at this point. Um, I had a really bad experience in one game. It basically made me stop playing for a while. Um, where I played really badly, got really frustrated with myself, and then I had people on my team just like bashing the living hell out of me. And I complained to my teammates that, hey, you're not making me want to play the game anymore. Like, do you realize that the words you say actually have meaning? And... Then I asked the, the rest of the enemy team, and I was like, hey, if you could report these people after the game, it would be really appreciated, as I don't think I'm going to log in and play League of Legends anymore. And it's been seven weeks now since I've played League. I believe I've never played Blue White Spirits. It sounds, like, okay-ish to me. Like, I like Serum Visions just because it can dig you to missing pieces. Um, but I'm not certain on, like, how much work you actually need it to be doing. Okay, so this feels like Cryptic plus Reman backup. So against that, I should fire off this K command. Ooh, I want to make myself discard. I think I'm going to make myself discard. I discard, you get shocked. The reason why I'm discarding myself is I don't want to discard one of their obstinate Baylos. If they do have a cryptic for this, I still get to flash in Snapcaster Mage. Um, it makes them bite right now. That's the big thing. Like basically, this allows the second Snapcaster Mage to be lethal. And it allows the... I don't need to play a Snapcaster Mage here on end step and risk something weird happening. But I still have the ability to if I want to. So now this opens up the line now if I can Snapcaster K command them and have Snare up for a remand to win through a Cryptic plus a remand effect. Of course, Believe. Hopefully that was a reasonable enough assessment. Um, like, if you're digging for specific pieces or it's solving different problems for you throughout the game, I think the card has legs. Um, I don't know specifically if it's doing that in that deck. Like, if you're digging for Drog Skull Captain, Selfless Spirit, um, things of that nature in specific matchups, it can be reasonable, but it's difficult to assess that rather than just having extra threshold density. Okay, so I think it's correct for me to sit here, untap, draw, go to combat. Attack, I would expect my opponent to not be alive. Okay, so they lead on Snapcaster to block. I'm going to counter. He 
assume this three man is targeting. It's targeting my spell snare, not their snapcaster? Weird. Weird. Okay. My opponent also figured out that they don't have any outs if that's the case. I couldn't really figure out what happened there. But, whatever. What's up, Danny? How it goes? Uh, I'm playing horribly. Life's good. Um, other than that, yeah, like I said, things are good. Okay, just not getting a land after the third one gets down. Yeah, it would get me down too. Um, interesting. Extra on demand cycle. Like, how many lands are you playing out of curiosity? Believe, and are you like splashing green for collect a company at all? David, I don't think he can ever win. I think he needs to target the Snapcaster Mage and still with my Spell Snare on the stack. Still with the Spell Snare on the stack, recast. Excuse me, sorry, the Snapcaster Mage. But if he does that, now he's tapped all his mana and I just play Snapcaster out of my yard and just K command him. Whew. Yeah, K command of Legacy is disgusting. That that makes some sense, I believe. I can imagine getting Flooded Strands, Misty Rainforest. That's probably one of the troubling ones. Um, and then, you know, Breeding Pools and Temple Gardens. It probably adds a few Honda out of the deck. Danny, mostly just work. Um, this weekend I'm hanging out with a friend on Sunday. I might be free on Saturday. I might be free on Saturday. Holy crap. Free on a Saturday, that's great. Four flooded... Yeah, okay, if you have four flooded strands, you're almost there. Alright, do we see anything? Makes us want to change anything here? I don't think so. None of these cards seem doable. Somebody wanted to cut a Kologon's command. I like Kologon's commands, it just gives me like, a way to surgical. Ancestral visions actually don't seem like that insane, so I think playing three is fine. I think the person who came up with the idea of you want all four ancestrals is not like wrong at all. That person actually brings up a good point of like, hey, this ever resolves, you're in a great spot. See, so you just put three in your deck, you just draw them anyways. <laughs> yeah, oh, I forgot Noble Hierarch's like $60 or something silly. Absurd. Absurd. I love me some Birds of Paradise. Birds of Paradise is great. Yes, there's this. I prefer support, then jungle, then top lane, then mid, then ADC. I just, I can't, I can't last hit the minions. It's too hard. I'm really bad at that. Alright, I'm gonna go to 17, get a Steam Vents. And suspend ancestral. And just pray my opponent just plays Circle or Tribe Alder. My opponent's Steam Vents is prettier than mine. This is sucks. Should I just go buy pretty arts and all cards. <sighs> Seriously, there's your Rob Alexander Steam Vents. What's up, Ingrathis? No, no. Crap, that's bad. <laughs> oh, darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Alright, well, given that, it's going to force us to make some moves. Uh, my opponent's not really going to have many good 4-mana things here, so I'm just going to fetch immediately going to 14 and uh, try to dig into Fulminators and other proactive spells that I actually want to cast. Dispel and Surgical. Yeah, I will take both of those. It's going to be tricky to find a spot for the surgical, but... <laughs> okay, now we just need to get to the resolve. Fair enough, fair enough. 
Okay, I'm gonna put the dispel first, I believe. Yeah, I'm gonna put the dispel first. So I don't think there's gonna be a spot where I'm gonna fulminate or mage next turn. So I'm going to want to Fulminator Mage with that Dispel back up through a Cryptic. Just kind of hoping my opponent doesn't like Cryptic bounce one of my lands and start going crazy. It's possible though. Yeah, and Grathis, people love me playing Grixis. I even put up a poll on Twitter. I was like, hey, we can do Modern Master Drafts or we can Grixis. What do you guys want to do? And 65% of the people, 65%, almost 2 to 1, they're like, no, nah, man, you're the Grixis control guy. You got to battle Grixis control. I cannot honestly say I know what the Magic Gathering card does. Oh, never mind. I know this card does. I've seen this before. I'm not happy. But I know what that card does. So I wish I'd help counter scroll now. Now I'd be a little silly. <sighs> Alright. So the hope and pray turn for no prime times. I've played against these lists before that don't have prime time, so I'm just gonna hope that's what my opponent's doing. Sure, that's fine. Alright, I'm going to make you discard. I'm going to kill this thing. Make you start making some moves. I guess I don't really want to F6, because I guess there's a world in which you cryptic me and I care. But... Yeah, it is a little bit trickier, but not the most, honestly. A lot of it is actually just, like, blowing up all of their hand and then just locking them out of the game. Alright, so they did let it resolve. They discarded Bolt. The surprising card is still on their deck. This comes off next turn, if I remember correctly. Alright, let's make sure there's no reason for me to Fulminator Mage here. There's not. I just cannot beat two copies of the card. Escape and shift. So I need my opponent to not have two escape and shifts. I can beat escape and shift plus a single counter. That's what I'm going to hope my opponent has. Okie dokie, Smokey. I would like to counter scroll your escape shift. Reman targeting escape shift.
<laughs> uh, God. <sighs> God, I really want to play for the win. I have four cards coming. All right, so basically what's going on here is our opponent has, you know, I'll try to win the game. I'm playing, you know, Counter Squall, and they're now trying to remand their own Scape Shift. So let's just try to think through this really fast. If they had double remand, they could just remand the Counter Squall and then remand it again. So I'm trying to figure out if there's any sort of combination here where if I dispel this remand, I don't get to surgical their scape shift. And I'm trying to convince myself there's no reason that, like, because I have four cards coming, I'll find a Snapcaster Mage or I'll find a additional copy of Surgical where I can surgical here for the information to make sure that I win the game if I hit one of those cards. With 44 cards remaining in my library, I have six copies, and I get four looks. So it's six and 44, six and 43, six and 42, and six and 41. Uh, so it's like 15%. One minus all that, it's about 40% to win the game. So I think I agree with the people in the chat that are like, I don't think that you're ever supposed to play another counter here. Sure, I'm going to lose to a spell snare. Sure, I'm going to lose to... Um, an additional copy of Remand, sure I'll lose to a Dispel back on this line, but I believe that this line is likely to win me the game enough of the time that I'm supposed to just fight there. Alright, it looks like we ended up winning that fight. Punish plays out their island. We're going to go ahead and kill all their scape shifts here. And we'll see if they have any other ways to win this match. They have a Glenelender Archmage. They have Glenelander Archmage, two Snapcaster Mages, and two Sakura Tribalders, along with two Velikut, the Molten Pinnacles, remaining in their library. And then one Lightning Bolt left. So realistically, no. They cannot win it anymore after we've removed all of the escape shifts. And don't worry, remember to get the one from the yard. Yeah, Atheist got it. So like, that's what I believe also. The only way I could not have been dead is having double the spell. And it's not like my opponent should ever play around counter spell to spell to spell. And eventually was why we get to that spot where it's like they could have just jammed counter counter into it also. Alright, so now it should just be routine attacking with Grey Ogres. Also known as 3 mana 2-2s, two also known as Fulminator Mage. Because sometimes you put Fulminator Mage in your deck. And there's a Grey Ogre. And sometimes you draw Tassiger. So sometimes you win. Um, yeah, we can just hold up Counter Squall this turn. I don't really care to remove my opponent's Lightning Bolt. Ooh, a Valka. Target acquired. Alright, given that, let's go and activate Tassie. And then we'll strip mine Surgical that. Yeah, this is one of the big problems I had when I was playing Modern this weekend, is so many decks just fold to Surgical Extraction. But I could not imagine in any world when I would ever register a deck anymore that just folds to Surgical. Because there's a deck running around that people are calling the best deck, Death Shadow, with eight discard spells, and then they get three Fulminator Mages after board. Why would you do that to yourself? Uh, yes, I understand my opponent could draw whatever, like a Glenelendra. I guess we don't even have to kill this. <laughs> yeah, I should have told Snapcaster Mitch with Skullagon's command. I didn't take a picture of their deck. Whatever, I'm just going to blow a stupid thing up. Made enough mistakes tonight that I'm just not going to compound them into future mistakes. Let's actually go to my opponent's draw step and pretend like I'm playing the game. Pretend like I've been there. Uh, 
Uh, Admiral, that's what I thought also. It does reasonable work. It's not great work, but it does just do some. Like, I think it's very good against the uh, Abzan versions that are, like, playing Varals and Liliana. I'm trying to close my Chrome instead of try to go over here so we can open up our sweet chests. So I think I earned some chests this weekend after I started winning again. Maybe not this weekend. No, it's not that. We're going to this one. All right. Yeah, I these guys. We got there eventually, but my opponent couldn't win with a valid cut anyways, and I had six lands, and no, only four of them were blue, so let's see. I can No, I can still uh, snap catch or K command, make them discard, shock them, and have to spell up. Night, Richie. No worries. I'm going to have to get to bed here soon, but first we're going to open up some chests. So get out in the chat and spam whatever your favorite card is that you want me to open. Um, if you have any sweet cards you can think of, uh... Yeah, start spamming them in the chat. Remember, if we run badly, we start opening Kaladesh packs because they never they never sell for anything. The bots won't take them. Um, but yeah, start chanting your favorite card. Have I tried to sample stroke on my board? Um, I haven't. I'm assuming the card you're most interested in out of that, Danny, to kill with the disdainful stroke is uh, like Tron cards, specifically Worldbreaker, Karn, Ugin, Ulamog, things of that nature. Is very good on against Eldrazi, like Thought Not Seer, Reality Smasher. And then has game in a couple other matchups where people ward up just like on huge mana spells for whatever reason. Um, it is a card I've considered, but I've never actually like played more with five, more than five games with. Um, I played five games that against Mantle Drazi and then just cut it because they didn't have enough targets, and I was really really depressed. Like they had twelve targets. I mean that that probably actually is enough, but I was just really depressed when they would draw Cavernous Souls. All right, so let's see. We got Mog Catchers, Port, Port, Leovold, Leovold, Port, Atroxa, Island. All right, De Devilish Greg's on Island. I'm a fan of that one. Mog Flunkies. Russell, you must have been watching Numot this morning. He was just picking Mog Flunkies out of every pack. Masterpiece Sword of Fire and Ice. Ooh. Yeah, Admiral, you could play Ceremonious Rejection there. I mean, if you were willing to bring in the card against Jeskai to counter, like, Sphinx's Revelation, Elspeth, Cryptics, then I could see... Um, you can get a Black Lotus out of this? Okay, if we get a Black Lotus, we're going to have to start playing Vintage. You guys might never get me to play Modern again. I don't know what this card is. Ashes of the Fallen. But, uh, Admiral, yeah, I think what you're saying there has some, some merit. Choose a creature type. Each creature in your graveyard has the chosen type in addition to its other types. Okay, weird. 8th edition Hallimine, cool. I've tried to play that card in Constructed before. The Twins of Mauer State. <laughs> Ashes of the Fallen, Black Lotus. Same difference. 20 play points. No Black Lotus, Danny. Uh, Danny, I... When I get to watch Vintage, it's pretty interesting. I'm hoping that they change up some things soon, but... Ooh. Alright, well... Alright, we gotta get a poll in the chat. I don't know how to do those uh, straw poll things. Uh, spam one in the chat if you want to use the normal blood crypt from return, sorry, not normal blood crypt, the return to Ravnica blood crypt. Spam two in the chat if you want to use the, uh, expedition blood crypt. So, one equals RTR, two equals expedition. Spam. You gotta go crazy. Alright, alright, we'll put it on our deck. Two not close, two not close, two people saying one. This is how you use it. Oh, wait, somebody's actually explaining to me how to do something useful. Devilish Greg's being awesome here. Alright, if you click exclamation point straw poll, option one, comma, option N starts a straw poll, followed by a link. Yeah, Friendly Willy, that was the problem, is I could go to Straw Poll, but that would require me to understand how Straw Poll works before I go there. Oh, you people are just too smart. You guys already know how all this stuff works. I go to Straw Poll to click on things. I've never... All right, yeah, you go over to this cool website, you click one or the other. I've never actually, like, gone to the main Straw Poll website. I probably could have figured it out in 30 seconds, but... All right. AJ's on three. All right, AJ... So we're going to put three Blood Crypts in our deck, right, AJ? Is that what you determined? <laughs> oh, gosh. I should have assumed. 
That was silly of me. I've played with most of these cards. Oh man, I have four of these too. I have five of them? I should sell one. Alright, pretty blood crypt, get in there. Other pretty blood crypt, you have to go over here. Alright, we got a blood crypt. Alright, back to spam black lotuses. I want to spam mismatched lands. It's okay. Uh, oh yeah, they could have got. You're right, Dokkabite. I didn't think about that. Alright, here we go. Black Lotus. Ooh, see, look at that. Potentially bannable Felidar Guardian. That's worth some tickets. I don't know if the Banfire is worth anything. Alright, ran bad that time. We gotta open a Kaladesh pack. Boom, he's Storm Rock. Nothing else for value. Alright, let's try another one. Alright, Confiscation Coup. That's close enough. Alright, it's gotta be a Black Lotus. We just had two bad rares in a row. <laughs> that thing should be. Rage Phoenix, maybe. You never know. Oh my god. I. Okay, so every time you play Pipping Needle, I believe that this card might be off centered. Like, there might be a space before its name. So I think I've seen this card all the time and it pops up. But I've never seen it before. Like, what it actually does. As it enters the battlefield, choose White Citizen, Blue Karamid, Black Thrall, Red Goblin, or Green Sapperling. Three activate, create a 1 1 creature type of the chosen color and type. That's a cool card. That's pretty cool. I love the flavor of that card. That card's sweet. Dark Devilish, I forgot to cut. There, one of them was a forest. Alright, you're in for Island? Yeah, don't go away. I didn't either. Ooh, an Angel Invention. I don't think I owned many of those. Got another forest. Maybe that means there'll be a Mox, uh, Mox in this pack. Or whatever this card is. Uh, Keterit Parasite. Whenever opponent draws a card, if you control a red permanent, you may have this deal one damage to that player. Alright. I'm gonna guess that's not modern playable, so we'll try again. You got two forests? Yeah, maybe we'll get an island. I'll accept swamps. Swamp. Ooh, nice. That's probably worth some tickets. See, this is why you open your Kaladesh packs, because it's worth. Ooh, and there was an island. And there was an island. What's we have when name spoils of the lab man? What's the on Azium? Grixis. Hey, Admiral, it is Grixis Poe. If I were playing the Jace Friends Prodigy version with, like, um, Liliana's, I would certainly have one or two of those in my 75. Um, I think it's just price, isn't it? Nice, 12.7 tickets. There we go. See, opening all these Kaladesh packs is worth it. Oh my god, what is this? Five mana tutu haste, alright. ETB attach all equipment on it to this. All the battlefield equipment on it to this. That's interesting. Okay. So it even equips their stuff? Weird. Weird card. Ooh, Depala. I don't know if I own four of her. I think she's a her. Um, I think it's a her. Alright, one more of these and we'll open up these last two chests. Ooh, Paradoxical Outcomes. Ooh, in a swamp. There we go. Swamp King's in the house. Here we go. Yeah, Dokumai, we're not running well in these chests tonight. Alright, that was a really bad one, too. Alright, I'm feeling it. Black Lotus, here you go. Oh, Pure Steel Paladin. That might be worth something. Depaul is a hero. Okay, cool. Eh. Not really, but... Whatever. That was fun. Worn some more chests this week and keep cracking them, and maybe I'll actually play better and earn more than one chest. Sorry about that one match, guys. It was horrible. Um, but it's like 12.15. I got work in the morning. and I do want to probably do this again tomorrow night, though. I might want to battle a little bit more with Grixis. Maybe try out a couple different cards. Maybe try playing better. Let's get this counter squad here for the negate, finally. <sighs> negate. God, negate is so good. It's like so clean. Um, is this one? Teen. Yeah, that one. 
You opened like two vintage cards in your shot for MPO. Yeah. Yeah, we did open Paradoxical Outcome. Play a Chandra? It's a little more difficult. I might not own four Chandras in Or do I not own four physical Chandras? One or the other. Either way. Um, I'm very likely to stream again tomorrow. Um, not sure if we'll stream more Grixis. Oh, no, I didn't want to add one to the sideboard. I wanted to add one to the trade binder. Uh, I might uh, play Modern Masters. Or I might play Grixis Control and Modern. Might just play whatever heck stream decides again. You never know. So... I have it open, don't worry. I've got it right here. Nope, that's not the right poll. This one, here we go. Uh, Nathaniel Black, don't worry. I'm, lo I'm looking at it actually right now. Let's look at it now. Um, let's pull it up over here. Hopefully this won't be horrendous for you guys to look at. You can also see all the silly windows that I keep open 24-7, which are my dashboard and my actual Twitch here. So I this is how I read the chat. This is probably a super ghetto way to do it. Someone's probably got a way smarter way to do it. Of course, though, come on. But yeah, go ahead and follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook. I didn't post on Facebook today, I'll correct that tomorrow. I'm sorry if anybody here follows me on Facebook and I didn't post for you, I am I do apologize. Um, but I will be sure to post on there tomorrow. I did not realize that until about 9.30 that I screwed that up, but it was that issue. Um, let's see what's going on here. Oh, these are off charms. I remember somebody telling me about this. Okay. Seven discard with the brutality gets it to eight, four serum... Two Denial, two Path, two Charm, three Push. Oh, oh, this is the Delver Esper one. Okay, okay, okay. I know, I have I have seen... I don't know if this is a specific list, but I've definitely seen this type of deck. Geist of St. Traft. When do you really want to board up to Geist of St. Traft, though? Clicks a little weird to me. You can just get so many better disruptive elements than having to play a click. Hmm. I mean, I guess it does answer big creature things. Like, this deck's going to be soft fairly often to prime time coming down. But, I mean, in those matchups, you're much more likely to just want to try to thought see surgical that problem. Click does help answer that, though, like I said. Uh, this deck looks interesting to me, at least. Not a fan of these Delvers. I think you can just be so much more efficient than that. I was going to make a comment of maybe you want to play Dark Confidant on this stack, but... Yeah, that, that'll go over really well when you play your Dark Confidant on 7 life or whatever on turn 3. <laughs> pop out the chat, click the gear and pop it out. On my dashboard, I assume? Oh, it does pop out. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, cool, thanks. I did not know about that. Interesting. Thanks, Devilish. Dokumoy, uh, I guess that's a weird way to say it. Like, it looks like a 1-mana 3-2, but you are playing, you know, 12 other creatures. So you have 13 total, and there's 12 other creatures and 2 Planeswalkers, and you have 19 lands or whatever. Uh, so let's see, it's 12 to 33, so you have 27 spells. Like, after sideboard, there were some number of artifacts in the list. Like, sure, it's flipping greater than 50% of the time, not blind, because there's some number of those times you're going to have surgicals. Uh, and you're going to thin your deck aggressively of lands. Um, but I think at the end of the day, like I just want to be focusing on playing the Death Shadow and then whatever the next best threat is. And if one mana 3-2 is my next best threat, I just don't know how happy I am. Like I think I'd be happier if this deck just had a fourth Delph threat and just played all the Street Race. Um, after that, I don't know what its next best threat is, but... like. I definitely think it should have, like, full Minder Mages in the board, even though it's Esper rather than Grixis. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Of course, Devilish, thanks for hanging out. It was a pleasure having you. Hopefully I'll, uh, try to play even remotely close to competently next time. <laughs> there were a couple decent plays, but then there were a couple games where you shake your head in disbelief of the things I was doing. So, yeah, specifically this Game Shift game wasn't great. But thank you for hanging out. I'm glad you had a good time. That's just my thoughts on it, at least. Of course, Jokomai. Anytime. 
But that's gonna do it for me, everybody. Everybody have a good night. Let's try to figure out... I'll actually send you guys to some cool individual that's streaming here. I don't know if Owen's still on. I like Owen a lot. If Owen's still on, we will send all you fine folks that gentleman's way. Do, 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 do. Nope. The only people I have on are playing Diablo 2. Oh, I've got Caleb. Yeah, we can just send you up. Wow, Caleb's got 2,000 people watching him. This is awesome. Good for Caleb. Alright, let's see here. Host. It's been a while since I've done this. Good night, everybody. Thank you again. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I can just type slash host. I think that worked. There we go, it worked. <laughs> Admiral, I'm so sorry. I also like Augur. I'm gonna take Guildgate out of this pack.